If any county is not treating this like the emergency that it is, then they risk losing emergency funds. If any county is not treating this like the emergency that it is, then they risk losing emergency funds. So nice. We'll play it twice, Jay. What do you think? It's a Wednesday. Welcome to the show, November 25th. It's uh, Thanksgiving Eve, and we're glad you're here along with us. We got a barn burner of a show today. You're going to want to stay tuned. In fact, you're going to want to tell all of your friends to tune in. Um, small businesses everywhere under attack as people just try and figure out what do we do? What do we do with the government overreach and the bureaucracy that's happening right now? On the show today, we're going to be joined by the Weld County Sheriff. And Sheriff Steve Reams will be joining us along with the 18th District Judicial Attorney. And that's George Brockler. He's going to join us on the show today. Stephen Gould from Golden Moon Distillery. And uh, George Eater is going to show us around his patio. Jay, what do you think of that? I'm excited because I had a little preview. He was supposed to send me pics. This is when I would put a pic up of it to, to promote it. Jay, where are they now? Where are the voices? Where are they now? Where are your politicians that you elected? Uh, I watched the nightly news last night, Jay. Did you know that? Do you watch the nightly news? I don't. I like to just see what's going on. You should watch that. Um, Nothing. I didn't learn anything. What I did learn is Biden is trying to get his transition, which is fine. He's talking. But who's calming you down? Who's coming to the table and calming you down and saying, just hang on next week. We got you. It's under control. You fought so hard. Get us into office. We got you. Where are they? I'll tell you where they're at. Jay, you want to know where they're at? Yeah. <laughs> Some of, they're, uh, they're on airplanes going to visit their families. Mm -hmm. One in particular is going to Mississippi. This is the A topic today. You cannot make this up, Jay. You can't make it up. Have you ever sent a drunk text? <laughs> Have you? Uh, maybe one or two. <laughs> Have you ever? Just, and and just, you wake up in the morning, you're like, man, I wish I'd have never sent that text. Have you ever done that? I know you've, we've all done things that we regret. But stupid. Stupid is amazing. Just stupid stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder what the blowback of this. Mayor, <laughs> Mayor Michael Hancock, and we want to hear from you. Sound off on the stream. We want your opinion on this. If you're uh, watching this from any other Facebook page besides the Modern Eaters Facebook page, come on over. The water's nice and warm. Join us on the Modern Eater Facebook page because there you can join us on the stream and we'll see your comments. Happy to read them, no matter what they are. We're fearless, Jay. That's right. And, sh and share it. And share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. <laughs> you can't make this up. All right. Here it is. Michael, your mayor, his honor, the playboy himself, Michael B. Hancock, right? Pass the potatoes, Jay, not the COVID. This is what he starts his tweet out with as, as he's packing his bag, right? Mm -hmm. As he's packing his bag to head to Mississippi. Stay home as much as you can, especially if you're sick. Host virtual gatherings instead of in-person dinners. Here's the kicker, Jay. Do as I say, not as I do. Avoid travel if you can. Do you like that? Mm -hmm. All right. Order your holiday meal from a local eatery. Shop online with a small business for Black Friday. And he left one thing out. I mean, that all sounds good he right there. He left one thing out. What's that? And kiss my ass. <laughs> and, and kiss my ass. Uh, I mean, you can't, you cannot make this stuff up. This, these, are, these are your government officials that you voted into office that as you idly watch your small business, your restaurant, your bar, or as Jay calls it, your restaurant, your restaurant, your bar or restaurant, um, your local officials right now. So uh, what are people doing? They're pushing back. And the positioning, it's, in, it's like a chess match. Who's doing what? Who's, who's aligned with who? What are the commissioners doing for your county? What's your local mun municipalities doing, your mayors? What's the health department doing? What will they do? So the governor, the governor, he's threatening your licensing. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's how he's going to keep you in line. Take your liquor license. It's hard to get a liquor license, Jay. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, I've looked into it. It's, it ain't easy, as yeah. they say. And when you're a criminal or an outlaw, which they're becoming, what have I been saying, Jay? Let's see if you got it today. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me put the camera on me so if I mess it up. Um, when restaurant and bars become outlawed, restaurant 
and bar owners become outlaws. I'm so proud of you. I actually laid in bed and I'm thought so about that last you. night. Check it, out, check it out. Michael Hancock on a plane. Do you think he's going to delete this tweet because they're firing off on him on Twitter? It is, he is like, he's like the everything you don't do example mm-hmm. of hi- hypocrisy. Right. It's just how do you listen to your local officials to tell you one thing while they do another? Tell me that right now, Jay. I, I, how do you do it? That's where the expression. Uh, what, that's where the expression. Um, fact is truer than fiction. Okay, what are their actions showing you right now? Take the, this in, and I, I want to make this clear to everybody. Watch what people do. Don't listen to them. Watch what people do. Okay. Now, question, Jay. Yes. Since, since you're the guy, I'm going to yeah. question. If somebody's actions show differently from what they do, if they tell you something in the future, how much stock are you going to have in that? And do you think that they believe what they're telling you? Well, I mean, see, and well, I mean, a little bit of rhetorical there, but yeah, I mean, but that's the problem with, with the hypocrisy is that that is just straight out saying, I don't even believe in the, in the stuff that we're telling you to do, you know? Mm-hmm. Twitter's just having a field day with this dude. Michael Hancock, this is gold. I, so is he going to deplane, deplane <laughs> when he's in uh, Mississippi? Is he going to deplane and is Man, he going to delete this text? That, I don't know, but that, that's something to where you, you know, because you would never get the straight answer like uh, on, on air. That's something where you would just love to just in between doors and be like, hey, man, yeah. what happened? Now, uh, again, under great authority that um, these, these folks, they watch the show. Uh, Governor Polis, hello, how are you? Uh, it's an interesting chess match that you're doing here. He must be just <laughs> rolling over at home, right? Playing it safe. He's got the barriers around him. He's trying to do all the things. But Governor Polis, you're trying to do all the things that you're preaching. You must just be like, oh, my God. Hancock, what are you doing? You're killing me, man. Yeah. You're, you're my guy. Yeah. You're my guy. Yeah, that that's the that's the definition of uh, the PR office must be going off the hook. I don't know where the phone number. I have the phone number to uh, the mayor's office, which I don't know. Call it whatever you can find that yourself. But uh, again, stick around. We'll see. We'll see what happens today. We'll see what sh- I have. A lot of questions, Jay. I bet you do. Sheriff Steve Reams is going to join us from Well County now. Renownedly, Jay Well County, they do their own thing anyway. So they're consi- you know, this is not a shock what's happening in Well County with the commissioners, with the sheriffs, with the defiance, with the staying open, with encouraging business to do, businesses to do what they feel right and to maintain safety and appeal to the customer to say, here's what we're doing. Do you feel safe? If you do, come do business with us. Seems fine, right? Mm-hmm. These guys were radicals. Months ago, these guys were radicals. Anymore these days, they're seeming to be pretty even-minded. Isn't that an interesting thing? Yeah. They're starting to eat themselves right now. Michael Hancock is eating himself right now. Your words mean nothing. They're empty. So, the narrative. We've been talking about the narrative for the longest time. The narrative is, if you go to a local business... If you go eat indoors at a restaurant, the local media outlets far and wide who are going to completely give you that message, if you go eat indoors, you're going you, to go back and kill your grandma. Okay? One death is too many deaths. You're getting comparisons now, epidemiologists coming out, health officials saying, we've got more data now. We're starting to figure this out a little bit more. The way that you're treating this right now in March may have been acceptable, but right now in November, it's a little bit different. The picking and choosing, the arbitrary places. You guys are pissed off. I don't blame you. But Michael Hancock, man, whoo, my man. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We've got more clips to play you. We want to sound off. Let's get you going right here. Uh, on the stream, if you're, again, if you're watching this from any other 
place besides the Modern Eater Facebook page. We want to hear from you. Go to the Modern Eater Facebook page while you're there. Click notifications. Anytime we go live, you pop up. This is the place. This is where community leaders tune in. This is where restaurant and bar owners tune in. This is where politicians and bureaucrats tune in. They all just want to peek in what's happening. But why are people afraid, right? You're afraid because these are the very same politicians, and especially in the restaurant business, restaurants and bars. They fought so hard. They knew the shutdowns were coming, but they put too much faith in the federal government, in your local government, that they were going to fund you. Now, here's the thing. I, and, and I follow the money. Just follow the money. Where are, where's Guy Fieri? Where's Guy Fieri? Where's Thomas Keller? Where's Bobby Stuckey? Where are these guys? Follow the money, right? Don't bite the hand that feeds you. And all of you that sat back idly and you said, you know what, I'm going to go with this. I have my allegiance. Where are they now? Where's President-elect Joe Biden? Why, isn't it, why is he on the national news and all they can talk about is the transition? But you can't calm people down. You can't tell them relief's on the way. You can't say sit tight. You know why they're not saying it? Because it's not on the way. You got played. You got schooled. And you know it. This is like an episode of Punked. It's a bad episode of Punked. You know why it's a bad episode? Because you're playing with people's families, their lives, and their businesses. If you're not sharing this stream right now, and in fact, I got something for you. We'll bribe you, we'll, right? Let's bribe them. We got a prize closet, right? Full of local stuff. If, you, if we see it, you come on to our, you say shared. We'll send you a cool local hat from a local business. We might send you a bottle of something, sunflower oil from Colorado Mills. There's a pretty some meat. We'll a, send you some meat. It's a pretty sick we'll hoodie give you back something, there, man. There's a sick hoodie back there. Go on to our stream and share it. It'll tell us. And say, hey, I shared it because I care. It's important. Far and wide, we need to get together. That local voice, man. If we have to be that lighthouse, you know, it's foggy. You ever been in a? Uh, Seen a lighthouse in the fog? I've day? seen one. I don't they think work. I've been inside one. They work. <laughs> they work. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We've got some housekeeping. You're not going to want to miss this. Sheriff Steve Reams, Well County. Now, there it is, Sheriff. It's Well County. Granted, I mean, a lot of you are going to dismiss it. Oh, well, that's Well County. That's the wild, wild west. All they're doing, look, their hospitals are packed. They're going to want to go to Douglas County and get in their hospitals. Did you know, on the border, okay, Well County, Douglas County, on the border, Douglas County officials are saying, if you do that, Well County, and you're a resident of Well County, and you try and get into our hospital, and because you become sick, we're going to turn you away, or we want to turn you away. It's getting really weird, Jay. It's getting really, really weird. So uh, Sheriff Steve Reams is going to join us. George Brockler, 18th District Judicial Attorney. Are you a criminal? Are you becoming a criminal? Because, Jay, when restaurants and bars are outlawed, restaurant and bar owners become outlaws. Get ready. I'm going to go to break here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. might be becoming a criminal, but George Brockler will tell you what your rights are. Stephen Gould, Golden Moon Distiller. It's a barn burner of a show, man. George Eater's going to come up. He's going to show us our patio. What did you do to support local yesterday, Jay? You better tell me something good. Uh, you yesterday? Better, yes. Um, well, I did the Modern Eater show and, and, and talked about What'd it for you, a while. What did you eat? I, had, I cooked at home. I had food at home. So okay. I didn't, now, I didn't buy, didn't buy anything. It's important now. Well, I, it's hey, important. Well, listen. Last night I went to Bull and Bush. I just put out a little thing on my personal Facebook page, and I said, hey, where sh who should I support tonight? Where should I go? On the way home right? Bowling Bush went out. Delicious French dip. Delicious, right? But here's the thing. Took a picture. I should put this up. They have a huge tent. Out, their indoors is outdoors now, but it looks like indoors. And people are like, what? How is it? Nothing makes sense right now. Mental health. We're going to talk about mental health later in the show. Jay's going to make us laugh in the last segment. But mental health, I'm telling you, it's kind of good for people that before all of this, we're off whack and maybe a little depressed because now everybody relates with you. Now everybody can relate with how you're feeling because we're all jacked up. 
You know, how are we going to get this through this? And it's going to be together. Share the stream. Share the stream, okay? You can do it. You can do it. I know you can. I'm losing my mind. Can you tell? Hey, man, just don't knock me down for having leftover pork curry, all right? It's delicious. I'm knocking you down because tonight, what are you going to do tonight for dinner? I don't know. You're going to get some. You say I'm going to get some food from a local business. Oh, well, that's obvious. I don't have any man. leftovers. <laughs> I had those last night. Share the stream. We're going to give you something cool from our prize closet. Maybe we'll even take you in there. You can pick it out, maybe. It's going to be a good show. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You're watching them. Actions speak louder than words. Mayor Hancock, boy, you're a gem, dude. You are a gem. Was he drunk? He had to have been drunk when he did that. Was that a drunk tweet, Jay? I want to know right now. Put it this way. I think it would make a lot of people feel better if it was. You ever been so drunk where you wake up in the morning, you check your phone? Like, who do you owe an apology to? Hancock, you owe an apology to all of us. All of us. Because you know what? You don't believe it either. You get all that information. You're briefed all the time, right? You're briefed all the time. You get all the briefings. You get the numbers. You get the data. You don't believe it. You're showing us you don't believe it. Thank you for doing that. Am I alone in this? Mm -mm. Am I alone? Mm -mm. What do you believe? Are you being played? Were you played? Months and months over the summer. Programming. Jay, could you turn on the TV? Without a political ad hitting you in the no, face? No, man. I mean, you can't. You, you, no. Now I start to understand why you didn't vote. Well, that, there's more to it than that. Because it's but, all bullshit. Yeah, well, that's a lot of it. <laughs> that's a lot I'm of it. I'm sorry. Why well, I don't ever cuss. I don't ever cuss. Thanks for joining us. You want to stick around. What we're going to do is we're going to take a break. Here's some great local um, purveyors. Great products. Cool. Mm-hmm. You're going to see a little bit from those guys. Support that. When you can, don't make it just this thing, right? Do, actually do it. Get off of Amazon. It's important. Triage. That's what we're in right now. Okay, we'll be back to Studio Kitchen Colorado in a flash. The Modern Eater Show continues. Sheriff, coming up. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, 4 by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the Modern Eater. You're watching them. You're tasting them. You're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey 4-pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pencos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. Welcome to Tommyknocker Brewery here in beautiful Idaho Springs. Uh, we brew normally twice a day. Currently brew about 18 different beers. And right here is our brew kettle, steam-fired brew kettle. And uh, we generate our steam with natural gas. And we get our natural gas from Encore Energy and Brian Rizzuto. I really like working with Brian because he explains how the system works of getting your natural gas. It's not a mystery. I actually understand our energy bill. Watching the Modern Eater, and now back to the show. That is endangering the lives of the residents of Weld County, and as governor, I'm going to act to prevent that and protect people in Weld County. Bad boys, bad boys, what you going to do? You know, I mean, listen, this is all serious. This is 
completely serious. And I, I mean, we're just seeing it happen. We're watching. You cannot make this stuff up. You know, mayor's on his way to Mississippi. He's showing you what he believes. Okay. I had, man, I wanted to get my hands on this photo so bad. Had a friend of mine in the business. Show me a photo, Jay, of your mayor and mine, mm -hmm. his honor, whooping it up, eating and drinking, sitting at a bar at a local restaurant. Didn't have a problem in the world. You know, that's normal stuff, but it's not normal times. Uh, coming up, I think I see him uh, there, but um, we've got the sheriff of Weld County, Steve Reams, coming up, and then George Brockler, 18th District Judicial Attorney. Um, actually, I, I think we maybe mixed up the times there. I think George is actually standing by. We might take him. Uh, the poll today. Please answer our poll. Looks like you already are. Here's the poll of the day. Are you losing faith in your elected officials? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, is it 38%? No, is it 14%? I want to talk to you guys, the no, the 14%. Um, just right in the stream, why you still have faith in your elected officials. Uh, the other option is only some, 14%. So no and only some, 14% apiece. And then uh, I never had faith in them at 34%. So you can see where that's going. Who do we have right now, Jay? Nobody. Nobody. Cool. Nobody. We can keep I'm, going with this. Yeah. At 2.30, um, again, Sheriff Steve Reams, Weld County, the, Weld, the wild, wild west in Weld County. Let's look at some of these comments. Mark Henry, Greg Holland Black, please call after the show today. We are working on something. I will do so. Uh, Matthew Gears, nice shirt. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, what are we? Uh, Keith Segura, the mayor of the shitty and county of Denver, says, do as I say, not as I do. Hat tip to that uh, <laughs> uh, word there of a business killer and those who voted him into office. You know who you are and you got owned. I hope the next election you vote for an individual who really supports small businesses will make will ah, make quarantine when he arrives in HTX from Denver. Oh, he's talking about Hancock. Will he quarantine when he gets back? I don't know. If he sits down for 14 days, will he still be on the paycheck? Uh, I, you know you know the answer to these. Uh, Chad, you have the consensus. Do as I say, not as I do. And uh, it, the beat goes on from there. Again, it came out, and I want to show you. Let's re let let's see the uh, let's see the comments as we watch Mayor Hancock's Twitter feed just freaking light up. Uh, here's some of the feedbacks from fellow Coloradans from the mayor's tweet that he sent out today that basically said, "Don't travel as he's traveling." So your trip to spend Thanksgiving with the family in Mississippi that you're literally at the airport. For as this is tweeted out is wholly unavoidable. Uh, what a disgrace. Let's see what we got here. We've got, uh, boy, they're just get letting him have it. Uh, you might have to wait for a response. The plane might not have Wi-Fi. Typical politics. Do what I say, not as I do. This is, this, this, this is the stuff right here. This is the stuff that when you see it and you're saying, okay, I'm told... I, I'm, I'm Mr. and Mrs. America. I'm Mr. and Mrs. Colorado. I've been told to limit my family members tomorrow at dinner. It's going to be me and my immediate family, and we're going to have our extended family on a Zoom call, and every, because I was told I'm a, I'm a good citizen. Okay? Um, these are the folks that are like, okay, you need, last call, business, a restaurant owner, restaurant owner, last call, 10 p.m. Make sure it's okay, 10 p.m. 8 o'clock, okay, 8 o'clock, I'll do that. Can't eat inside, eat outside, okay, we'll do that. And now you're expecting these very same people, as there's no relief in sight, there's supposed to be a special legislative session. Where is it to get some funding locally? I mean, there's not enough money in the coffers in Colorado to prop up these businesses that are failing. It's got to come at a federal level. And most of you guys bet on the roll. Service industry renownedly went that direction. 
And now they're saying, where are they? Where are your elected officials on a federal level? It's an interesting time. Okay, I see this gentleman here, uh, Sheriff Steve Reams, Weld County Jay, Let's take a break. We'll come right back. We'll get to the sheriff. I've got tons of questions. I've got tons of questions. And most of them have to do with enforcement, okay? What better person to go to than sheriff? And I have a feeling he's going to say, hey, listen, on this level, we might just, uh, you know, turn cheek and say, but I can't control these other entities. And that's licensing. <laughs> They're coming at your licensing. The governor told you, right? He's coming at your licensing. He's going to do what he can. And uh, the threat is real. It's happening. You're seeing it all over the place. Not just Colorado, but all over the country. The messages are inconsistent. Everything is being picked and choosed. It's arbitrary. Data is coming in that's showing where these outbreaks are coming from. And the division between small business and large business is getting wider and wider as the, attributed, as the attrition happens with your friends and family's businesses. It took them years. Jay, you know what it takes to start a small business? Yes, I a do. A lot of work, man. It ain't easy. Starting over is not going to be cool. Okay, Sheriff's coming up. Uh, well, County Sheriff Steve Reams. He'll be next right here. The Modern Eater Show continues. <laughs> I love the laugh. You're ready. Like right now? Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's Kyle Mindenhall. I'm talking with uh, my good friends from the Modern Eater Show. Keep supporting them. There's a lot of good stuff happening. We started Meridium Spirits because we love the way that spirits and cocktails can bring people together to socialize, to bond, to have conversations. Well, right now we've got some big conversations to have. Coop Vodka and Coop Gin are available at liquor stores across the metro area, but if you can't find us or would like to have us behind your bar or at your restaurant, send us an email, info at meridiumspirits.com. We know things are a little different these days, but think of us the next time you're planning a virtual happy hour or a socially distant picnic. And keep an eye on our social media, Coop by Meridium, for all the latest and greatest. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. I just want to thank everybody for showing so much support to small local restaurants in this really hard time and you're watching The Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. If any county is not treating this like the emergency that it is, then they risk losing emergency funds. Ooh, there it is. All right, your governor, Jared Polis, is coming out. The threats, they're, they're there, right? But uh, how much weight do they hold? How much weight do they hold? We're going to get to, uh, there he is, uh, Steve Reams, Sheriff of Weld County, the wild, wild west. I want to tell you right now about Jeff Rourke and A-plus Beverage Solutions before we get going. Another great family owned and operated business here in Colorado. What does he do? He installs tap systems, right? That delicious beer that you love. Tap systems and maintenance. Not too important right now. Jeff Rourke would like you to know, please, thank you. Um, go out tonight. Support your local restaurant. Bundle up. Bring your own blanket. Sit out. Sit in the inside that's outside. How does that make sense? What does make sense is we need to do everything that we can to rally around our, our businesses that we love so much. It's, it's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Share the stream. Got a lot of questions. We're going to do it right now. Uh, Sheriff Steve Reams joins us right now from the uh, Sheriff's Office. And uh, welcome to the Modern Eater Show. How are you, Sheriff? I'm doing well, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, you bet. 
Uh, you're you're an outlaw. You're a cowboy. What are you doing? You're 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 an official. You should be upholding the law. Uh, let's just start from the beginning, Sheriff. In the wild, uh, well County, the wild, wild west. You guys are starting to seem more and more sane as it goes along, right? Your message has always been consistent. Yeah, you know, from the start of the pandemic uh, and the governor's, uh, you know, his directives or his orders, um, his emergency orders. We started to question how much authority the, the governor really had because he was giving the impression to the citizens that these orders that he was putting out uh, had the full effect of the law, which they do. Um, you know, they're, they're titled as having the full effect of the law. The problem is that people automatically assume that means criminal law. And that's just not how it works. Uh, these are these are health codes. These are health orders, which means they're they're enforced by public health agencies, not by law enforcement. But, you know, the governor doesn't go into those specifics because he wants people to be fearful that uh, law enforcement are going to be the ones out uh, enforcing these orders. And, you know, if that works uh, to keep people indoors or keep them from going to restaurants, then uh, that benefits what he's trying to accomplish, I guess. OK, Sheriff, so how does this work? Let's just uh, let, try and go slow and make sense of this all, because I, I think people are just completely confused to the point of paralyzation. When you confuse people, they, they just paralyze. And then what do they do? They roll over and give up and hope that there's help. Well, right now, the help is not on the horizon. We don't have enough money in Colorado to subsidize these businesses. So business owners, and I've been saying it, man, I, probably too many times, but just when they're getting sick of it, they start to catch on. When restaurants and bars, and we'll use business owners, when businesses are outlawed, business owners will become outlaws. Weld County, talk to how this works. There's commissioners, there's uh, mayor. How does it work there in Weld County? And, and then we'll get into the licensing aspect of that. Sure, just as in any other county, uh, the county commissioners oversee uh, the county's budget at large. So they oversee the, the major departments of the county. I'm an independently elected official as the sheriff. So I provide law enforcement services to uh, the residents out in unincorporated Weld County and then also to citizens inside municipalities uh, when we're asked for assistance. The commissioners have kind of, an, kind of an overall plan and they work with those individual cities, but the cities are also governed by mayors and, and city councils. Uh, but none of those uh, answer to the governor or to the, you know, to the governor's uh, appointed officials. They're all independently elected. They all make decisions for their cities and, and towns. And of course, the commissioners make uh, decisions for the county. And then in some counties, uh, the health department is an independent entity that's appointed by a group of, of counties. In Weld County, our health department uh, reports directly to the Weld County commissioners. So they don't issue an order that uh, isn't first approved by the Weld County commissioners. And I think that's why you see Weld County being a little, um, I'll call it standoffish to some of these governor's orders, because quite frankly, we don't think they fit uh, with, with what's in the best interest of Weld County residents. You know, as a kid, did you ever play that game where you built like, what was it called? Like civilization or something like that. You'd build, you'd put a little town square around it and then you build some businesses around it. You try and build up your, the benefit of having your businesses and the attrition closed down around you. Have you been to downtown Denver lately? Have you been to any downtown lately? Yeah. You know, I was down in uh, Denver. I'll, I'll say back in July, I haven't been down there since because it was so uh, atrocious the last time I was down there. I mean, it's crumbling. You, you watched all the businesses shutter. You watch them all literally board up their windows. I, I don't know where the government thinks they're going to get their tax base if they put all of those individuals out of business. But, um, you know, it, it takes a partnership for government to have anybody to tax and work from. And, uh, you know, we're, we're slowly shutting our own economy down. Uh, well, I shouldn't say slowly. It's happening a lot faster than I believed it would. Now, they're unwilling to do that in Weld County. It seems to me like they want to keep um, businesses strong. And, and one of the things that I really expect, respect from uh, the commissioners there, and, and I, I should have written his name down uh, on a News 4 piece that I saw him speak about, Let, let's leave it up to the consumer. We're going to have our businesses put a plea out to the consumer of what they're doing to make sure of your safety. It's going to be up to the consumer to say, you know what, I feel like I want to do business with you, so it's going to be an open door. On Monday, uh, it's going to be lifted, the, the, the order from the governor for uh, 
uh, safer at home is lifted. Am, am I correct with that? And, and they're in Weld County, they're opening the doors back up to say, okay, that's our goal. That's our, our go time to say, let's, let's open these businesses back up at, um, I guess what, full capacity? How does that work? Well, so the governor has placed us in the uh, the red category under his new health orders, and essentially, you know that that tells business that tells restaurants that they they can't have in person service. Mm-hmm. It, it limits the amount of people that can be inside other businesses. And what our commissioners have said all along is, you know, look, we're not we're not enforcing those orders. Uh, we don't believe that those orders make a lot of sense uh, based on the the and how transmissions are being reported. Mm-hmm. So we've encouraged businesses to do what they think is best for them. Uh, I don't believe the governor intends to lift the, uh, the, the red status off of Weld County. Uh, but essentially, businesses are going to do what businesses think they need to do in Weld County. And unfortunately, they're going to run the risk of some of those regulatory agencies that fall under the purview of the state uh, or the governor, you know, thereby. So uh, we're kind of setting up for a showdown in northern Colorado, not just in Weld, but also in Larimer. And Quite frankly, I, I think more people are starting to read their constitutions and read what state law does and doesn't allow the governor to do. And that's that doesn't matter your political affiliation. People are just they're going they're starving. You know, they're going out of business and they're trying to do what they can to, to, to save what little they have left. Yeah. Did you see uh, Mayor Hancock is on his way to Mississippi to meet with his family as he just today politely reminded you not to travel and. You, do you believe these guys, I mean, they're showing you, right? They're, they're, they're showing you. Well, you know, it's, it's very hypocritical to tell everybody to stay home and not, not mix families and that, you know, we're all the super spreaders by, by having friends over or whatnot. Uh, you know, at the same time, the governor can excuse himself or the mayor can excuse himself. I wasn't aware of that. Um, but quite frankly, good for him. Uh, it, it just, um, uh, underneath him and it's going to make his citizens have any a harder time of, of following what he's asking them to do. Yeah, that's what you call hubris, my friend, when your views and your opinions start to eat yourself <laughs> because uh, we're seeing it. Here's a clip from the, the governor. If any county is not treating this like the emergency that it is, then they risk losing emergency funds. Is, is that something that's a topic for conversation with the, the commissioners? You know, it hasn't been. Um, yeah, I meet with the commissioners very regularly. I speak with them. Uh, we have a great working relationship. And uh, we've said all along, you know, during any of these disasters, um, you know, we find a way as a as a county to pick ourselves up and, and dust ourselves off. And typically we don't ask for much help from the state. Uh, usually when the state shows up to provide help, it's uh, it's a little late for our, our needs. Uh, during this pandemic, you know, we've, we've worked closely with the state in some categories to try to get PPE and, and those those items. But, um, you know, those kind of threats are not um, they're not things that build a uh, build a team environment. And quite frankly, um, you know, we're we're not focusing on the governor's threats. We're focusing on what's best for the health and safety of the citizens of Weld County. And some of that health and safety also deals with economic health and safety. And there's a balance there that we all have to find. Um, Sheriff Steve Reams with us, Weld County Sheriff. You seem to be a really just mild mannered, uh, very smart and a uh, fun guy. And I, I, I don't know, are you, a ra- you're like a radical though, right? I mean, your, your thoughts are radical. You're defi- you're defying how, how other folks are, safety. You're going to kill people's grandmas with these thoughts. Well, you know, I, I'm sure I get criticized by, uh, some people that don't see, uh, see politics the same way as I do. I'm a conservative person. I believe that uh, it's the government's job to get out of people's way so that they can be successful. Uh, You know, we're supposed to provide a safe environment for people to conduct business. We're supposed to provide the infrastructure so that they can do so and be successful for themselves. We're not supposed to be a barrier or a burden to that, uh, that access to success. And, uh, you know, as a government official, I think it's my job to, to get out of the way of the citizens as much as I can. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here in Weld County is, you know, give the best advice we can, give the best encouragement we can and, and the best support that we can so that people can make good decisions for themselves, do what's best for themselves and still have a thriving economy. Man, bully for you guys taking care, you know, th- and this is really the, 
the, the triage of, and just take it to the microcosm of your family. What would you do inside of your family if you're struggling? If you, you'd, you'd, you'd unite together, you'd figure out what's best for your family, and you'd do what you could do to support your family internally. You would rely on your food sources. Uh, you, uh, anything that you could do, you would want to be self-reliant. And that's exactly what you guys have set yourself up for. Now, unfortunately, you have neighbors, right? And your neighbors' counties are saying, you irresponsible SOBs. We're, if you have one person that comes from your county that tries to come over to our hospitals because your hospitals are going to fill up, if you have one person, we're going to try and deny them from that. That's pretty petty, don't you think? Well, you know, those are regional hospitals. Um, and, and I understand that the, the mayor in Longmont uh, you know, he's he's upset with the spread of COVID. We're all upset with the spread of COVID. I think none of us want, want to see a, a virus, you know, cripple our cripple our economies or cripple our livelihoods. But, um, you know, to, to start making uh, arguments the way that, that he has, um, you know, I don't think it's in the best interest of his citizens or citizens in general. We have regionalized hospitals. There are people throughout Weld County who use hospitals across county lines and they have traditionally for years, whether that's Adams County or Boulder County or Larimer County. Um, well, County is a 4,000 square mile county. So, um, you know, we're pretty spread out. But um, interestingly enough, there are some large parts of Longmont that are actually in Weld County. So I don't know what message he's sending to those residents, uh, but I think it was a knee jerk reaction. Um, and hopefully uh, cooler heads will prevail there. And we're going to continue to tell citizens to do what's best for them. Man, you're a cool cucumber. I like it. Um, strength in numbers. So where do we go from here? That's always the question. Okay, where do we go from here? Find the mindset. Are you in communication with other county sheriffs of, um, you know, we're seeing Arapahoe County that's probably right behind you guys. The commissioners are trying to rally together, but they need to hear from the citizens say, okay, it's safe. We want to hear from you. That way we can push this agenda forward. Castle Rock, same thing. Are, are, is there any communications to actually make a concerted effort to figure out what's well within the rights of people? You know, as sheriffs, we have a statewide organ, organization, the County Sheriffs of Colorado, and we talk about not necessarily COVID specifically, but we talk about these types of topics uh, quite, quite frequently. Um, you know, at our different conferences and, and different, uh, you know, phone call meetings, whatever it may be. And I know there are a lot of sheriffs that are, that are feeling the same pressures that I am from citizens saying, gosh, you know, uh, we just we just want to keep our business alive. And I think, um, you know, a lot of the other sheriffs are, are looking at the, this topic in the same way. They may not be as vocal as I am. Uh, they may not be, um, you know, quite as outspoken. But um, nonetheless, I think they also understand that uh, it's not their role to go out and enforce these public health orders. And they're telling the citizens exactly what they are capable of doing and what they aren't. Uh, I feel like we're, we're doing a lot of education right now and, and trying to explain to people that the, the health orders are not a part of criminal law. And you really don't want law enforcement out enforcing, you know, mask mandates or restaurant closures. Uh, that's, not, that's not the principles that America was built on. It's not the principles that you want your law enforcement working under. And it's, it's really educating public as to what the government's power is and isn't. And then, again, letting them make their, their own best decisions. So are you telling me there's not a snitch line that you guys have set up to where people could call in and snitch their neighbors for having too many people around no. there peeking in your window? How many of that? I see too many cars out front of their house. I know. You don't have a snitch line for businesses that may be gathering together. I mean, did you see out of Orchard Park, New York, that video went viral um, at, a, at a local gym where business owners got together. And, and, and this is the mindset I want to get into your head with. There's a sheriff sitting there, and they just look like, oh, man, I'm just doing my marching orders. Do, do you think those sheriffs actually want to be there? Or, or is like, oh, I feel embarrassed? What, what's the mindset? So I can tell you that, that most uh, law enforcement officials don't want to get into uh, you know, petty conflicts like that. They want citizens to... To, to make good decisions and do what's best for them. Uh, to specifically address your question, we do not have a snitch line. Uh, we, we have received calls at our 911 center for people who want to report uh, you know, a business being open or someone not wearing a mask. And we simply refer those people to the state health department. Um, yeah, we, we provide the numbers and the contacts down there. And if they want to they take that, that up uh, in a different format, feel free. 
Uh, again, we try to educate people and say this isn't the format to, to try to report your neighbor or your, your neighboring business or whatever it may be. Because, um, you know, if we're just being candid, uh, the state only has a certain amount of resources they can uh, they can throw at this issue as well. And to your point, there's uh, there's a numbers game here. And, you know, I, I don't think the state state liquor licensing authority, state health department, any of that can keep up with uh, the demands of the entire state if counties, uh, if they don't go along with what the state's request. They'll try. I don't know. I have some cop friends and calling me up and saying, you know, we're getting guys walking off the job. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's, that's absolutely the case. Um, you know, not just necessarily because of uh, what's being asked uh, because of COVID or these, these public health orders, but it's just, it's hard to get in. It's hard to be in law enforcement right now. The, the narrative for law enforcement is really tough. You know, in one breath, we're told, um, you know, that we're, we're not doing policing well uh, nationally. And then in the next breath, we're being told that we should be going out and enforcing these, these orders that are obviously going to create conflicts between citizens and, and law enforcement. Um, you know, it's a, it's a mixed message. Uh, we're, we're not good for some things, but we're good for others. And it's a frustrating time for law enforcement, and there are a significant number of people leaving the job. Mm. And uh, but basically sum that up, lack of leadership. Yeah, um, you know, I, I feel like, again, the messaging that I put out is not just for my citizens. It's also for my troops. Um, I want my deputies to understand that, you know, we, we work for the citizens. Our job is is to provide public safety to them. Uh, we are not we police with them. We don't police them, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's it's all a matter of, of having that uh, that good working relationship with the citizens that uh, that trust us. Mm. Uh, last couple ones for you. I know you got to jump. Busy day is um, boy. This is when we'd all really just be reflecting on what we're thankful for, and now we're reflecting right. on what we're pissed off about. <laughs> it's totally interesting. Um, give me an idea of what your voicemails and your emails are like. You know, it's been overwhel- overwhelmingly positive. Uh, social media, I get, um, I don't know, hundreds of messages a day from people saying, thank you for standing up for, uh, you know, basic values. Thank you for standing up for the Constitution. And it's it's kind of um, it's almost ironic because all I'm doing is reaffirming what I can and can't do. And uh, I'm reaffirming the oath that I swore to. Uh, but I get voicemails, uh, you know, through through my work line here, emails. Uh, so, like I said, social media is a big one. Uh, it's probably 95 to 5 uh, percent you know, positive versus negative. There are some people that have wished that I would die. Uh, they hope that my family gets COVID and. and you know, that we all suffer a very painful uh, recovery from the disease if we recover at all. So, you know, it, it's there's some very uh, there's some very hateful folks out there, but that's overshadowed by the, the positive feedback that that I get and that my deputies get. And uh, the support we get in this community is, is just outstanding. Yeah, the folks that there in Weld County, you guys are starting to less, look less and less radical and more and more patriotic. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? As a, here we stand here today, and, and guess who's showing up? You're showing up. Where's the rest of them? That's, where are they? Right? They're not around. Well, you know, I encourage citizens out there right now, as the governor continues to put out these executive orders, um, you know, I, I don't see that he's going to, to, to stop uh, his executive orders at any time, anytime soon and declare the pandemic to be over. But there is a process where the legislature can do so. They can stop the uh, the executive order process by uh, by legislative action. So it's important for people to know who their representatives and their senators are. And if they're feeling this frustration, if, if they think this has gone too, gone on too long and they're, they're afraid they're going to lose their business, that's where the pressure needs to be applied. Uh, those are the people that you elect to make laws for you. Those are the people who... Uh, allowed for this executive order to go in, are these executive orders to go into place? Mm-hmm. And uh, they're also the ones that have the ability to stop it. How long have you been in the law enforcement business for? This is my 20, 23rd year, uh, six years as the sheriff. And um, anybody would have told me 23 years ago that this is the conversation uh, I'd be having uh, the day before Thanksgiving, I would have told them that they were crazy. <laughs> of course you would have. Have you ever seen anything like this? 
before? I was going to guess you were like 33. And, uh, I'll be 45 in a couple of days, but um, yeah, well, uh, I've never seen anything even close to this. I mean, what happened to the good old days where you you know get to drag a drunk out of the bar and you know drop him upside his head and cuff him and stuff him and those were the simple days, weren't they? Well, you know, responding to criminal calls is is never uh, you know is never routine. Um, but right now, you know, going to a bar call that's kind of a that's kind of an archaic term anymore since they're they're all being closed and shut down. Uh, the stuff that we're going to is is. Quite honestly, it's people that have been cooped up for quite some time. They're volatile, they're angry, they're hostile. And um, our calls for service are not going down. They're going up. Yeah, you read and my I mind. Know. I wanted to ask you about that as we enter a very important time and a lonely time. I mean, let's face it, uh, restaurants and bars, they served a real purpose during the holidays. I mean, folks that um, you know yeah. misplaced from their family or just no family and all, and that, that was their little connection to the world. That's gone away. What are you seeing as far as domestic calls and those types of things right now? Yeah, all that's on the rise. And, you know, Christmas time, Thanksgiving time, that's always, we always see a little bit of an increased call volume just because the stresses of the holidays and, you know, trying to be around family members that you're not normally around. Uh, but, you know, you take that and you multiply it with the last eight, nine months of people being locked indoors and not having their normal uh, social outlets and then throw holidays in on top of it and those stressors. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's unprecedented. We're going to some some really tough calls and uh, we're dealing with some people that are, uh, you know, mentally not in, in a very good way. And uh, it's hard on the deputies. It's hard on the people that we're going out to provide services to. But um, we're just going to keep on pushing along and hopefully uh, there's an end to this in sight. Okay. Now, I've known Jay Parker, my producer, for quite some time. We consider ourselves friends. He gets on my nerves more times than not. Is it okay that I smack him tomorrow? Can I smack <laughs> as him? Long as, you do it, as long as you do it lovingly uh, with good intent. <laughs> good. I appreciate your time here today. Do I today. get a vote in any of no, that? No, you don't. Or, Just take you your know? smack in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's going he's gonna to remind me, too, Steve, you know, like six months. Yeah. He's like, Sheriff Sh said, bro. Sheriff you. said. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff, what are you doing to support local? You know, my wife and I have, uh, we, we've been doing everything we possibly can, especially, when, you know, with Christmas shopping and those kind of things. Uh, we're trying to make sure that. We, uh, we order takeout business uh, you know, for food whenever we possibly can. If we find a restaurant that we can dine in, we're doing that. Uh, we're, we're encouraging those places to stay open. And, um, you know, it, it, it's costing me a lot more to go out to eat or pick up food because we're leaving the, as big a tip as, as we can afford. And mm -hmm. we're just trying to make sure that, uh, that those local companies and local businesses stay alive because those are the life, lifeblood of any economy, um, you know, the big box stores don't need to get any bigger and uh, we need to keep those local dollars local and, and we're putting our money where our mouth is and, and definitely trying to help support those, those folks and, and encourage them to, to, to do the same, you know, go out and support each other, uh, avoid those big box stores every time you can. And, and, uh, you know, just band together and do what's best for the, for the community. Hey, free shipping on Amazon and unlimited breadsticks from Olive Garden. That's the, world, that's the world we're going into. Uh, outbreak, but dang it, I know I said I'd let you go. How's the, internally, outbreaks inside of the system, um, the jails, that kind of thing. That's, a, that's where concern should be, right? Well, you know, early on, um, you know, I, I'm in the middle of a lawsuit with the ACLU about uh, the operation of my jail. The ACLU had a big push to decarcerate the jails. And I didn't feel like it was my job to advocate for the release of inmates from my facility. Uh, that's for judges and, and attorneys to, to come up with. And, and the population level in my jail has come down through those, those efforts from outside of uh, my control. Uh, we, had, we had COVID in the jail uh, early on in the, in the start of the pandemic, but uh, we've gotten to a point where we're controlling it very well. We're using the same protocols today that we did when this thing started, despite what you may read uh, in news publications. Uh, I think the inmates are probably more tired of dealing with COVID than, than, than my officers are. As far as just the, you know, the, the virus amongst deputies in the jail or out on the road, uh, we've managed to, to get through, I think, the worst, the, the worst part of it, the first wave. And, and uh, we're, just, we're just pushing through. Um, 
I, I don't think that the deputies fear COVID nearly as much as they do, a, you know, an armed suspect or, or some other kind of encounter. And uh, COVID's kind of the thing that um, we're past, I guess. Okay. What'd you win that trophy for behind you? <laughs> That's the plane pool uh, for Special Olympics. Uh, we won the, the, the fastest time a few years ago. And uh, since then, every other agency's tried to knock us off. And uh, it's been hard to retain the title. So we only have one trophy. <laughs> yeah, come and get it. I don't know, man. Uh, I'm in love with you. I'm going to move to Well County. We'll see you soon. We got lots of space. Bring it on up. Later, man. There he is, uh, Sheriff Steve Reams, Well County. I, you know, Jay, those are those are those are the interviews. Now, the, remember, the, the guys like this considered very radical. What they're doing, very very radical. Mm-hmm. You're seeing more and more of that radical coming out of folks. It's amazing what happens when you take people's livelihoods away from them, isn't it? It is, man. And, and you know, and just, uh, you know, uh, two cents, man. You know, cops get a bad rap a lot of the time, you know. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. And it's just. And just and, like everything else, there's people that suck, but people that suck come in all forms. Yeah. And he touched that. And when I talked to him uh, before the show, you know, we, I made a couple of jokes. And I'm like, man, I said, how co-? I said, everybody hates you until they need you. Yeah. And, you know, and that's just not fair. Uh, speaking of people that suck, I think he earned the status today. Uh, there he is. Your Honor, Mayor Hancock. <laughs> this is just gold. Pass the potatoes, not the COVID. Stay at home as much as you can, especially if you're sick. Host virtual gatherings instead of in-person dinners. Avoid travel if you can, unless you're the mayor. Order your holiday meal from a local eatery and shop online with a small business for Black Friday. Those are say, you're saying all the right things, but as you're doing this, you're doing this, right? Is the stream choppy? It, it's coming through. It had, it, it had a little rough, but it's okay. Thanks for joining us here today, and uh, we want your feedback too. If you are watching this from any other Facebook page than The Modern Eaters, if you want to comment, please go to The Modern Eater Facebook page, jump in on that stream. That was a great interview. If you missed any of it, you'll be able to replay it. Plus, it'll be online on themoderneater.com. Our poll today, Jay, we got a poll. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? I did know that. The poll today is, let's see. What is the poll today? Active. Are you losing faith in your local, in in your elected officials? Yes, at 38%. No, at 11%. Only some at 18%. And I never had faith in them at 33%. That's pretty telling. We got some good stuff coming up for you at 15 after the hour. What is it, 3 o'clock in the Mile High City? Yeah, I think George Eater's going to be up next. George Eater's coming up next? I think. All right, let's break right away. You're going to hear some great local commercials. Um, Please, if it's not these guys, find somebody local, spend your money with them, and um, avoid, you know, those drive throughs of companies that got you in line all day long. How does that even happen? Come on, you guys. Let's wake it up. If you're not pissed off, you're not paying attention, and when restaurant and bars are outlawed, guess what, Jay? Restaurant and bar owners become outlaws. You don't want it to happen. We're all good people. We want to do the right things. We don't want to kill grandma, right? but we also don't want to kill your business. We're trying to figure this out together. Truly, uh, your feedback is necessary. Greg at themoderneater.com, hashtag safer at restaurants. I believe it, man. Some of these restaurants, Jay, you could perform surgery in there. They're so clean. Dude, restaurants are way cleaner than anything. In fact, I got a minor procedure coming up. I'm going to call my doctor, see if I can have it done at George Eater's restaurant. I don't know what the procedure is, but I'll do it for half the cost. Really? Eh, it involves a knife. Yeah. Yeah. I assumed. I specialize with knives. <laughs> Ask Elon well, Wenzel. Let me tell you where it's at then. <laughs> All right. All right. We'll be back in a flash from Studio Kitchen, Colorado, George Eater next, Pizza Republica. And stand by. We're going to hear from the DA, the 18th District Judicial Attorney, I like to call him D.A. George Brockler. He'll be up, too, today at 315 on The Modern Eater Show. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms, and I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching The Modern Eater Show. (laughs) Hey, Zach Ryder here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. 
You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey, Modern Eater fans. I'm Don Trouble with The Annex by Art at Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning it into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. All right, back to the show in just a second, you guys. But it's, uh, it's time for bread, and it's the holidays. And Aspen Baking is where you want to go to get all your holiday bread. Chefs, uh, folks at home. Weird times definitely is AspenBaking.com. Jeff Nations over at Aspen Baking supports local. He's been doing it since 1994. He's the definition of small business, and he's the definition of delicious bread. So if you're into delicious bread and, and you're into supporting local, then AspenBaking.com is where we want to see you. Yeah, why not? Um, great show today. Thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'd appreciate it if you share the stream, too. Um, Got to get the word out, and it seems to be the sounding board right here, the Modern Eater Show, just being trusted by the local restaurant owners and, and bar owners to come on the show and speak their mind. And, you know, the, we put the invites out for the politicians and the bureaucrats and the ones that show up, right? Uh, Sheriff Steve Reams showed up, Weld County. I hope you enjoyed that. If you missed any of it, you'll be able to uh, backtrack it and uh, check out the uh, replay coming up. All right, in the meantime and in between time, let's go right to him, room zoom, 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 into uh, Greenwood Village. And uh, I love this guy. It's George Eater. Talk about a community, lifting up the community. This dude made Summer Dinner Series happen when it probably would not have. Um, he cares about all of us, and he cares about his people. He's fighting the good fight, and George Eater, looks like you're outside uh, dusting snow off of your dining room. Exactly. We got an outdoor dining room. We love it. You have to love it. Prob problematic with glasses, though, because they fog up with a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. Show us around. Show us what you're doing. What do you got going on? Well, we made a winter village. No, Check you did out. not. That is cute. I did. <laughs> we got little ski gondolas. Wait, hold up. Hold the phone. Those are hold ski gondolas. Up. Hold the phone. You better. Uh, those are ski gondolas. Can, can, can I right now put my name in the hat to get in on one of those gondolas? That is it right there. You've climbed the mountain and you figured it out. How'd you get that thing back in your car from wherever ski resort you took it from? <laughs> I got them from a buddy of mine at the gondola shop. There's a gondola And they shop. dropped them off this morning. They bought them on a big trailer. Man. So we're putting, we're going to put lights and heaters and all that kind of stuff. So you can book those online on Resi. Book a reservation in the gondolas, which are kind of cool. And then we've got, if you look down our block here, we all put tents in. It looks like DIA. Holy jeez. Go inside of one of those things. Let me see what's happening. This is, this is, this is mine in here. We got a little Christmas tree. What? We got heat. We got lights. We got yeah. people having fun. Now, There's music. I, now, I love it, George. I love it. But tell me how that's safer than your dining room. My dining room is safer. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Get out of here. In, I, I spent 
tons of money putting in bipolar ionization and uh, HEPA filters in the in the restaurant. So we change the air in the restaurant over every seven minutes, and there's eight million ions that's supposed to kill everything. So the air in the restaurant is, I think, better than the tent. But people dig the tent. It's kind of fun sitting outside. What are we seeing here, George? Uh, you know, restaurants and bars getting shut down. Restaurant owners now becoming criminals. You're trying to do everything you can not to become a criminal, but it's easier and easier now. It's easier and easier to get hemmed up by the constant changing and moving of the goalposts. Everything changes daily. How do you keep up? How do you stay from not being locked up? Um, I don't know. I think one day I'll get locked up. <laughs> it, it, the hard thing is, is staying in the right mindset. Like the hardest thing is staying positive right now because we just got it figured out where reservation books and everything we're working and we're doing 100, 150 covers and getting the turns and keeping everybody safe on Friday and Saturday night. And then we had all these plans to build this winter village so it would be enough business to sustain my entire staff. And then they pulled the rug out from under us. Now we're back to figuring out how do we do enough business to sustain 25% of my staff during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. They promoted Denver Restaurant Week. Um, spent a lot of money, actually, trying to get people. And then there it is, the, the, the rug. You know, I, I liken it to, like, um, Lucy. They would pull the football out from underneath Charlie Brown. Every single time, yeah, exactly. Charlie Brown never learned his lesson, you know, finally. And there should be a sequel to that. You think Charlie Brown ever fought back, right? Or got another he Lucy? He should. Are you sure it was Lucy? <laughs> yeah, it was Lucy. Wasn't it Lucy? I thought, I thought the name of, the, of that character was different. I think it was Lucy. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't. Um, but, but right now, and this is a serious thing. I don't know whether you caught any of Sheriff Steve Reams uh, from Weld County, Weld County Sheriff and and I think Arapahoe County commissioners are trying to get together and really just get feedback so that they have a case, so they can bring their case forward. But is this an exercise in futility? What are you seeing? In, in, because you have to plan, and planning goes out the window right now. What are your plans? Well, it, my plan is just to operate as long as I can, as safely as I can, and try and take care of my staff. And... It, and my guests can keep everybody as safe as possible. You know, the numbers and the facts just aren't there that this is an issue with restaurants. It's not. I've been operating safely for nine months. No cases, no scares, no anything. Because we're doing the right things. I think the problem with government is they want to put all these blanket rules everywhere. And there's zero enforcement. I haven't seen a health inspector or anyone from the government in over a year. I've emailed them. They've never come out. Be careful what you They've ask They've never for. even responded to an email. Careful what you ask for. They might not come out in the capacity you want them to. Um, well. So, so here we sit. And first of all, feedback of your honor, Michael Hancock, en route to Mississippi, as moments before, probably at the airport, Right. I, I likened it to like a drunk text, George. You ever wake up in the morning and have to go through your text to see who you need to apologize? And say, you think there's going to oh, be yeah. one word? Of, uh, Governor Polis must just be pulling what's left of his hair out and saying to himself, what in the world is this dude doing? You can't buy stupid like that. W what's your reaction? And, 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 and are you seeing... You know, obviously the feedback is do as I say, not as I do. But if he says anything ever again, would you listen to him? I don't listen to him now. But here, here's the thing. If you're in public office and you put out an order like that, and then you go ahead and it's just like saying fuck you to your whole constituency. And it's not a Democrat thing or a Republican thing. It's, are you an asshole or are you not an asshole? You have to have ethics and you have to have your word mean something. Mayor Hancock, guess what? Your word doesn't mean shit because you're a hypocrite. 
I was wondering when the color would come out and if it would, and it did, because that's George Eater, and that's it, why we love him. Coming, up, just, ne- coming up next is uh, D.A. George Brockler, and um, I wanted to ask you, what, what's a question you would ask the D.A.? You know, I'd, I'd ask anybody in public office right now, let's get past this partisan arguing back and forth and let's get effective at getting things done. You know, the government runs by, you know, two little kids fighting back and forth. And that, and in that process, nothing gets done. Fight, let's get the stimulus packages done. Let's take care of our small businesses. Let's get all the therapies and vaccines out there. And let's get through this. This is not a time to just bicker back and forth and fight. And for a DA, let the petty stuff with small businesses slide. If they've got a violation for a code on a tent, if they've got a violation for small things like they didn't renew their food license or something in time because they can't get to an office, let it slide. People are going to have to figure out that now is a time for a little bit of, you know, empathy and forgiveness in how we're going about setting things up. So if you're if you're a D.A., come on. Choose what you want to what you want to represent and do it with pride and ethics. Mm -hmm. I've known D.A. Brockler for years. I find him to be all of that, a very prideful, ethical, um, very family-oriented, very community-driven yeah. leader. And um, we'll, we'll catch and up I've with him. And I've heard nothing but great things for, about him as well. So He's just a good all-around person. And he's, he's served this country as well. Actually, I don't like him anymore, man. He's too good. <laughs> he's too good. Hey, George, <laughs> there, there's one thing that's important to me right now. And that's making sure that you're being supported. The call to action right now. Go support Pizza Republica. These are the good ones. This gentleman has tried to play within the game guidelines since Jump Street. He's been doing everything that he can to protect you, his customers, and his employees. That's all you can ask for right now. Yep. That, that's all just you can come out ask and for. Take care of, just come out and take care of my staff. They need it more than anything. We're going we're gonna to make it through this. I want to make sure they don't have a completely terrible Thanksgiving and Christmas. We're cooking for my whole staff to pick up Thanksgiving meals tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So you know, we're going to make sure they've got a Thanksgiving dinner. But come in and see them on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. And just take care of them. They'd love to meet you. They'd love to see, you know... Your smiling eyes through your mask. <laughs> <laughs> That's my smiling eyes. That's right. Okay, w- one last question. If I come and eat in that gondola, will you stuff me full of pizza and overserve me booze? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, George. I will for sure. We'll catch up soon, man. There he is. Uh, George Eater, Pizza right, Republica. He's one Stay of the, safe, Greg. Yeah. Stay safe, Jay. He's one of the best all-timers right there. Go support these guys. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Later, buddy. Please. Couldn't even imagine if his business was to go away. Wouldn't even know what to do with no, myself. No, man, and I like George Is a lot George too. Brockler standing by? He is not. He is not. No. He'll, he'll jump back in. We'll get to him. Oh, hold on. Speak There's D.A. Brockler. Speak. You know what? I'm not going to punish him with a commercial break, okay. although we have. Um, you can. You can. I'm happy to wait. <laughs> It'll be, listen, we don't have that many sponsors, man. These guys don't have any money. <laughs> they have zero cash, man. This is, this is all funded by my credit. <laughs> this, break, this is a short break. If you want to fit it in, we can. <laughs> That's right. Short break. We'll be back. Uh, D.A. Brockler on the way. Hey, you guys. Jay here with the Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the the Modern Eater. And uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators... You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever. 
And we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the Procard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you could actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out. And there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here at our facility in Park Hill soon. And uh, stay Go safe. home. I stripped down to my skivvies. All right, here we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. Hey, everybody. Steve Gould from Golden Moon Distillery and Golden Moon Speakeasy. When I get my cocktails to go from Golden Moon Speakeasy, I go home, I kick back, and I watch The Modern Eater. <laughs> skivvies. Hey, I'm a Marine. It's skivvies, man. All right, welcome back to Studio Kitchen Colorado as The Modern Eater Show continues. Um, <laughs> boy, we're just watching it happen, man. Mayor Hancock on his way, sending out drunk. It's got to be a drunk tweet. I'm dismissing it as a drunk tweet saying, in one breath, don't go out and travel, and dude's on an airplane. He's got to delete that. I know that he does. Hey, George Brockler, uh, DA George Brockler joining us. The 18th District Judicial Attorney, George Brockler. Um, you ever send out tweets that your staff says, you got to delete that, man, or you go, oh. But it's usually. I mean, look, there's a notorious one. You may remember this during uh, the Aurora Theater massacre trial. I can you guys hear me? OK, is this yeah. good enough sound? Yeah, I um, it was at the end of the day when we just finished up with the second forensic psychiatrist and uh, somebody had texted me and said, hey, I thought those videos of the shooter talking to the psychiatrist, I thought those things went well. And I texted back. I thought texting back and said, yeah, me too. I hope the jury agrees. It turns out that wasn't actually an SMS text to text. It was through Twitter and it tweeted it out to the planet Earth. And I got crushed by the judge the next day for tweeting from inside the courtroom. Well deserved, by the way, but holy smokes, man. So have I ever tweeted something where the staff came up? Yeah. They came up to me after that happened and said, I want to watch you delete the Twitter app from your phone. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Is that, that's true. <laughs> Oh, very true. Buddy, it was in the paper. There's a story in Westward. My kids love it because it's got me smiling and these fake little arms holding a phone like this. Oh, it's awesome. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, D.A. Brockler, uh, Transparency, um, George, and I can call him George. I can call him yep. George. Uh, George and I have known each other for quite some time. Been a colleague, awesome. and uh, you have actually a show as well on uh, 710K in U.S. Sure. buried amongst the uh, colon blow uh, programming on Saturdays, but uh, there you are. You have a should talk, talk about your Saturday show and what you talk about. I would just say I think of it as really the sweet spot for radio. When someone says, <laughs> I want the best spot on the dial at the right time, a lot of pe people think 6 to 9 a.m. on a Saturday, that's me. I'm right there. I already own it. There's nowhere to go from here but down. So, yeah, if you uh, tune into 710K in U.S. Saturday, 6 to 9 a.m., you'll hear these sultry tones, or you can always get us on podcast. Yeah. You also write for the Denver Post? I do. I got one coming out on, uh, I think, Sunday. It's going to blow up the governor a little bit. Not so much on what he's doing to small business as much as, I'm going to cut to the chase here. If you guys know there's a vaccine, everybody heard about the vaccine. It seems awesome. Everybody would like it. Um, the governor has rolled out a prioritization list for who gets the vaccine. And as it turns out, that 65 and older group that covers my dad, maybe your dad, grandpa, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, they fall in line behind uh, incarcerated murderers, rapists, and child molesters who will get the vaccine first. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that's the column on Sunday of the Denver Post. Click on, share it. Wait, first of all, what does make sense right now? Um, yeah, there isn't a ton, but if we're going to have a cure, if we're going to have a vaccine, it's something. I, it makes total sense to me to say, hey, our healthcare responders, those people got to get those guys, right? Like, for, it makes total sense. Even the Department of Corrections workers, I get it. But when you start to go down to the group that comprises 90% of all the deaths in Colorado, the COVID deaths, versus the seven prisoner deaths, it doesn't seem like a close call. Listen, I'm a publicly school educated guy. Math isn't my thing. But 90% of 2,500 and seven, those don't feel close. Those don't feel close. It's interesting. I love the comparisons because we can make that leap over to, okay, who needs what first? And I'm not understanding why small businesses are targets right now to where uh, clearly triage should be going 
uh, directly to those folks right now who are suffering. And there's no relief in sight, DA, none. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold out some optimism that the special session that the governor's calling that's going to get into effect here after Thanksgiving, I'm going to hope that they are quick, they are targeted, and they're relatively generous with how they're doing this. That, that's what we need to see happen. Yeah, the coffers in Colorado, I don't know, unless they're going to try and lobby to refund that money. I don't know where this cash is. We have, you haven't smoked that much weed. To, to fill up no. those co- you just haven't right i mean no, get your there, there isn't enough weed out there to cure all that glaucoma and raise that kind of money there just isn't um there's not but, but i'll say this we do have some more money now and that's because you know um the gallagher amendment got crushed i think it was 23 or whatever um, got it got crushed at the ballot what that means is starting next year the uh, legislature will have an extra 500 million dollars or something like that to spend that's a ton of money. That's a ton of money. So they could be more generous than the hundred million they're talking about. I, I don't know what the final accounting is, but hopefully they come to the rescue of these small businesses that we can blame it on the pandemic, but let's be real, man. It's government that is shutting these businesses down. Okay. Now let's, let's dig in. Now we dig in. We have to get serious now, George, get serious. Yeah. Okay. Um, people everywhere and, and they're not as versed they they don't follow politics like maybe you and i do or know the pecking orders but enforcement it seems to be enforcement so business owners everywhere they're just trying to rally together for information their pants are down they don't know it, rightfully so they're what, what do you got there that was hickory house it's a local business in parker i'm just sharing the love oh, that's you know. fantastic Thank you. placement right there it's like a yeah, episode, that's right. episode of wayne's world right there in the da's office okay enforcement Every turn, you got the governor saying, okay, we're going to come at your county's funding. We're going to strip licensing from you. What, and, and then on the most basic level of just police or sheriff offices coming to you or your business, where is enforcement? What do you com- what's coming through your office right now? Let's start there. First up, nothing with any businesses. And, and way back when this first kicked off in March, I reached out to my sheriffs. I have four counties here, Arapahoe, Douglas, Elbert, and Lincoln, uh, governing about 1.1 million Coloradans and a whole mess of businesses, including restaurants. And uh, I talked with the sheriffs. I talked with Tri-County Health Department, which governs Adams, Arapahoe, and Douglas. And, and I was very comforted by the fact that we were all on the same page and that nobody wanted to see these public health violations, which are prosecutable as crimes, show up in the criminal court system for a couple of reasons. One, the primary reason is these shouldn't be treated like crime. These shouldn't be treated like domestic violence, child abuse, or DUIs. This isn't the right venue for it. But two, we were at a place where we were kicking people out of jails and keeping them out of courts for DUI, domestic violence, and child abuse because of the COVID. It didn't make sense to start filling those spaces in with law-abiding citizens who are trying to keep their businesses going in contravention of even some public health laws. So you know, my sense of it is, is I would like to leave office and leave this pandemic having never once prosecuted a single business owner for a violation. And so far, that's been true. No, nobody's brought one forward. But I will tell you this, if we catch people committing other crimes where they are also violating the public health order, I will tack that on. There's no doubt about it. Law enforcement will too. So if you're out there, let's say, driving drunk at a time when there's a curfew, or a time when you shouldn't be doing something, you got 8 billion people in the car, I will consider tacking on the public health order violation. But so far, nothing to do with businesses. I, I, I find such great empathy um, with them. My wife's a small business owner, and she's not nearly as impacted as these restaurants. But, you know, I have grave concern that there are people here who are trying to not only exercise their rights and liberties in the country, but trying to be a benefit to society. Instead of being a taker from government, they're trying to create jobs and and revenue that actually provides for the government. And now, through no fault of their own, they're put in this untenable position of um, of really dying on the vine. And they try to do these things not out of uh, greed or maliciousness or I don't care about the government, but really out of trying to sustain this thing that they built. And I've got great empathy for those folks. So um, my hope is that we can get through this without any one of them being brought into criminal court out here in the 18th. Mm-hmm. So from the governor's standpoint, and uh, this is where it gets really just confusing and the, 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 
the stickiness begins here. Licensing, what, what do you know that you can share about that? And what's, what's in the recourse rights of folks to say, I, you know what, I would love to join forces and have a voice and, and maybe even, and I think the narrative needs to change. That's a whole nother thing to where even if you open up the doors, people are still, you know, they, they think they're going to kill their grandma if they go eat at your indoor. But if you eat in your indoor outdoor, your grandma's going to be safe. And, and the messages are skewed all over the place. But licensing is real. It takes a lot to get a liquor license. It takes a lot to work with the health department. You don't want to piss off these people because they will hold a grudge. How does that all work? Not only will they hold a grudge, but they're, look, they're in a position right now where they put out what they believe to be the best advice and the best guidance and, frankly, the legal orders to protect the populace. If they were to allow someone to be flagrant and recalcitrant in violating those public health orders, they either have to do something about it or they have to send the message that we're not going to do anything about it. And then it's Katie bar the door. It's a little Dutch boy pulling his finger out of the restaurant dike and everybody and their mother are going to town because they're going to say, whoa, you can't target me. You didn't target A, B, or C. You can't come after D, E, or F. It's a very tough position to be in. Um, the licensing part is real. And because it's administrative, you don't enjoy anywhere near the same protections you do for your rights in criminal court. Um, those constitutional rights are much abated in an administrative setting. There are business licensing attorneys and experts out there who probably know some ways to delay the inevitable, but I don't know that they can prevent the inevitable. And, and that's what you're trying to do is you just don't want to run across these people to the degree where they start pulling those things. I'm interested to see what the governor is going to do with this county funding thing that you brought up because the two counties that have said, we're not going to do this little dance with you are Mesa and Weld. And I spoke with County Commissioner Rose Puglisi, who's a superstar out there in Mesa County, and I had her on the radio on Saturday, and she told me that they told the governor, hey, we, we're demanding a meeting with you. We already had a five-star program to allow restaurants to open up under conditions that surpass the ones that CDC has put out. So you can't just come in and tell us, oh, screw that. We're just going to move forward. And, you know, sure enough, right, and I'm not going to take credit for this, but right after the radio show, the governor's office issued them a letter that said, it's okay. You can drive on with your five-star program. That may be what we need to see the Welds and the Douglases and the Arapahoes and the other counties do is to say, okay, health departments stay out of our business as long as we can come up with a plan that satisfies, scratches that itch for you, whatever that public health thing is, but let us maintain local control over these businesses so we're not inviting in all of these licensing issues and these other questions. That's probably the best place we can go at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay, now uh, as we have just a few more minutes left with you, now we get into the uh, prognostication or the speculation. What are we seeing here? What we, We're obviously seeing that with our mayor doing the exact opposite of what he's telling people to do, their actions, his actions, I don't want to lump, pull us into there, his actions are, I, I don't believe in any of this either. I'm going to travel, I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to bring COVID back. I, I'm going to do what I want. I've got a friend of mine that's in the, the restaurant business. He sent me a picture. or he, I wish he would have sent me the picture because I would have shown it. I begged for it. He's at a bar, mask off, eating, drinking, happy, doing all the things we wish we could be doing right now. He doesn't believe it. They don't believe it. Or do they? Where's the disconnect? This is a tough one because up until this moment, as you know, politicians have been considered largely the most credible members of society. Oh, no, wait. No, they're not. So the idea that there's hypocrisy, yeah. I'm sure, shocks absolutely yeah. no one. Um, you know, but, but there's the flip side of this, too, which is you probably watch sometimes the news. I do, too. I'll catch my wife watching NBC at night. And here are these people outside of the Capitol, clearly six feet from the freaking camera, and they're wearing a mask for their interview with that virtue signaling sort of, yeah. see, I'm wearing a mask too. Yeah. It's the opposite of what the mayor is alleged to have done, which is to say mask, 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 but mm -hmm. I'm going to travel. Everyone should stay home, but not me, because I want to go see my daughter, which he, he should want to see his daughter. But, but the hypocrisy is crazy. And to think that it has no impact on regular citizens, especially when it comes to things like, do we need to follow the government's guidance on what to do with restaurants? I think that's ridiculous. I think it's contrary to human nature. You either um, walk the walk or you don't. 
And I think what we're seeing more and more is just this, it's this virtue signaling hypocrisy thing that causes people to question whether it's real because the people in government telling us it's real don't act like it's real. How, how did we back our ways into this position to where, you know, people talked about it for years, it's going to come, government overreach is going to rear its head someday, you're going to wish that you would have kept it tightened and, and rallied in, you're going to wish you put more faith into your local government and, and your leaders, you're going to wish that your communities were tight-knit and didn't have that federal control or influence, how did we walk our way, it, this it reminds me of where, you know, if you're dating, you're hanging out with somebody and then all of a sudden you're in a relationship, you didn't even know how you got there, how did we get here? And then, and then you have a baby. Yeah, I know. I think we've all been there. Uh, listen, I, I think it's incrementalist. And, and you've all heard the same analogy, which is, you know, the way you boil a frog isn't to throw a frog into a boiling pot of water. You put them in the water and start to turn up the temperature. I think that's what's been happening over the years. But I don't want people to lose sight of the fact that this is not a partisan issue. This emergency powers law that has given superpowers to the governor was passed by a Republican legislature about, you know, 50, 60 years ago. They empowered him, any governor, to do this under these circumstances. The problem is because every lever of government is currently in the hands of the same party, you don't have any other contrary voice. Like, where was the legislature during the early stages of this pandemic when these giant crushing orders were put down while they were in session? Remember, they took a break, but they came back to stand up and say, listen, we want to carve back some of this power, or we want to seat at the table and dictate the terms under which you can do this, or you know what, we're going to change the law so that every 30 days, you have to come back to us to get our blessing on it, even if it means a special session. They didn't any of that. They, they rolled over on their backs and said, rub my tummy, and let's see if we can't win more seats in the legislature. So we've incrementally gotten here, and now that we're here, I, granted, we haven't seen a pandemic like this in a century. I appreciate that. I want a governor to have the ability to make some sweeping, life-saving decisions. But what, this has been government of one now for, what, eight months? Mm -hmm. Government of one. That's outrageous. Uh, we should be pushing back. And it wouldn't matter to me if it was a Republican governor or a Democrat. I don't think we should be standing for this. What we should be doing is not waiting for it to get over taking action right now. Legislature's coming into a special session, but they're going to be back in full session in January. I'll bet you not a single bill gets offered to challenge the superpowers of the governor under this emergency. And that's a shame. That's a real shame. He's a family man. He's a patriot. He's a community leader. He's handsome. He's got it all going. Well, thank you. DA George Brock. I was going to ask you, are you single right now? Are you, are you in the midst? Because you're looking way too good to be married only single in the office. And look, the bottom line is this, when the pandemic hit, here's yes. the upside of the COVID, uh -huh. right? All we had in the house was one Peloton bike. And so 60 days in a row, I rode that. You combine that with no cake at the office, no eating out at lunch. And all of a sudden I'm at my high school weight. I'm like 157. I mean, it's crazy. It's like I'm sick. You're looking good, man. Thanks for serving our country. Thanks for serving our communities. Thanks for being George Brockler. I think you're a classy, just well-spoken great individual. Thanks for coming on the show today. Keep up this great show, Greg. Keep it up, man. It does great stuff. Appreciate your time. Go support local. I know you will. That's uh, George Brockler. What a dude. Man, that's a nice dude, man. Um, really cool guy. Yeah. You know, he had the um, huge task of prosecuting the Aurora theater shootings. Get out of here, really? Wow, that is not... Uh, uh, I don't even know what that is. That's a tough one. <laughs> that, that's where when it's, you know, when that's I complain about my stress type stuff, you know, there's other people with jobs that go. Absolutely. Yeah, stress. Huh? We're seeing it happen. We're seeing it happen. Um, Stephen Gould looking at him with a barrel of booze. That I, I want one of those in my house. How do I get one? Oh, that's a green screen. You're cheating. You are cheating. They'll bring him up right now. So... <laughs> So I am, but I'm not, because the chair I'm sitting in is actually the other side of the wall from where those barrels are. Uh -huh. I'm in the distillery, but let's face it, the still house is a lot sexier looking than my nasty desk. I get it's it. full of papers. So in other words, those are your pictures of your... You could be there right now if you wanted to be. I'd have to walk, I'd have to walk next door. It's literally right behind me. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Stephen Gould, he's a friend of ours. Golden Moon Distillery, Golden Moon Speakeasy, Golden Colorado. I'm going to let you d d tell people what you do, and then um, we'll get going here. So um, 
I and my wife are the founders and owners of Golden Moon Distillery here in Golden. Uh, we're an artisan distillery that makes whiskeys, gins, and liqueurs. Uh, we're distributed in 17 states here in the United States. Uh, we're in four countries in Europe. Actually, sorry, five countries in Europe. Uh, we just uh, were selected by the, the Monopoly in Norway to uh, bring our single malts into, into Norway here uh, in January. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we're in Taiwan. Um, we're getting ready to go into Japan. So uh, we make and sell really good booze. And then we own an amazing little cocktail venue in downtown Golden uh, called Golden Moon Speakeasy. Uh, named the top classic cocktail bar in Denver a couple of years ago by Westward. Uh, regularly named as one of the top cocktail venues uh, by Eater, by Vin Pair Magazine, a few other people. Um, so pretty fun little joint. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the exception of a few tables outside, you can't go in and enjoy our hospitality, but you can pick up cocktails to go there as well. Uh, right now, um, we do have some tents when the sun's out or when the weather's warm. We've got lights, we've got heaters, and so you can still get a good cocktail to dine in, if you will, but it's going to be outside. You represent the distilling community as well. I do. So I am the board member for Governor, uh, Government Affairs for the Colorado Distillers Guild, a uh, role I've held for over a decade. Um, I am on the Government and Legis Legislative Affairs Committee for the American Craft Spirits Association, and I'm on the National Advisory Board for the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States. So what that means is that I am basically, for legislative and government affairs purposes, uh, the advocate of and the face of uh, the distilling community in Colorado at the state and national levels. What does that all mean? <laughs> so wow it i mean you're doing a lot it means, but what you, do you... <laughs> it means you go to his joint when you want a cocktail <laughs> that's, that's right. what it means no no i mean it means that that i work very hard along with a whole bunch of other people around the country um to advocate for distillers and distillery pubs um and laws that will affect us so that means uh the extension of the federal excise tax reduction uh that we've had for the last several years which gives us parity uh, a rough parity with beer and wine as far as alcohol tax. Mm -hmm. uh, that expires this year unless it gets renewed, um, and we're working very hard on that. It means uh, working with the government to try and deal with trade issues. Uh, the trade war that we've been in is, has disproportionately harmed small alcohol producers. Um, heck, it's cost me uh, and other people in Colorado between 10 and 30 percent of our revenue uh, in lost export sales of American products abroad. Um, and then with the conversation we're having today, it means advocating as part of the, uh, uh, the industry working group uh, here in Colorado for liquor enforcement and working with the governor's office and the Colorado Department of, of, of Health and Human Services uh, to make sure that our tasting rooms and our fellow manufacturers tasting rooms, which is uh, beer, wine and cider, um, are treated fairly. Uh, when these govern the governor's executive orders come out, I mean the bulk of of the distilleries, breweries, wineries, and cideries here in Colorado are small family-owned businesses, mine included, and many of us make a substantial portion of our revenue uh, in our on-premise venues, which are sort of bar restaurant kind of venues. Uh, the bulk of us are considered restaurants under the current rules. And up until this, this latest escalation, we're operating at 50%, uh, or sorry, at 25%. Um, now it's outside dining only, just as we're getting into winter. And the reality is that a sizable number of, of the small and medium-sized uh, beer, wine, cider, and spirit producers mm -hmm. in Colorado may not survive this winter because the, of the way that these regulations or these executive orders are being applied. Now, that's not now, to say that this is an by, urgent Steve. crisis. Uh, stand say by. again? Stand by just a second here. I want to translate for Jay. Mm -hmm. Jay, basically, he f gets everybody together, an organized voice, gets that voice and has legislators that he works with on a local and federal level, and when he calls them, they'll pick up the phone, and because the voice is very organized, that they'll actually do things for him in the community. 
which is a cool thing. And, and it's not for me. It's for our community. Right, right, for the community. You know, so he represents that fortune. And we're trying to figure that out. You know, the restaurant, the Colorado Restaurant Association, I think they do a great job over there. I also think Eat Denver does. But the voices need to be unified. And that's what you're seeing right now is a scrambling of small business unifying. What are we learning from what we're seeing with the experience that you have dealing with legislators, dealing with local municipalities and government, dealing with the federal government, and having that lobbyist voice of just what you do to make a concerted effort and what can we learn from that and how can it translate? Thanks. Well, I think the biggest challenge we all face is that, you know, we're in the middle of an unprecedented national health crisis. And rather than everybody banding together to work for the greater good, certain political elements have politicized it. They've said it's a hoax. And certain other people uh, let's call them bad actors, restaurant owners, bar owners that just don't have gone the other direction. And so what you're seeing is, you know, 40 percent of the population saying at some level, this is not something we, we, we need to worry about. And then you're seeing business owners that are saying, I'm just not going to try and follow the rules. And as a result, you've got only half the population wearing masks when the science is there to show that masks do work. Um, and you've got uh, frustrated government officials that with the best of intentions are saying, fine, if you guys aren't gonna play by the rules, then none of you get to play at all. Yeah, well, and let's throw a couple more things in there because I wanna be fair as the goalposts change frequently. Okay. And you've got your mayor that's uh, telling you not to travel and he's clearly showing you that he believes traveling's fine and safe. He believes going to meet with family members are safe. You've got photos of him at the bar eating and drinking and having a merry time, not socially distancing. And he's showing you that he believes that is safe as well. So as you uh, recognize that there's a vision and you call them law-abiding citizens versus people that don't want to play by the rules, I think it's unfair to label any of those folks when I think it's just misguided efforts of basically putting forth optics and bad information that came forth in a pandemic that was not very readily studied at the beginning. And now that there's more information, the, cha the changes in the, the regulations aren't according to what the actual statistics show. So I'd like to challenge you on that. Go ahead. Well, you know, it's the statistics are outright scary. Um, I mean, I look at the numbers pretty regularly. Um, I talk to the, the governor's office and liquor enforcement I talk to the various county leadership uh, folks. Um, I'm regularly looking at, at, at the health data from the various different government organizations. Um, I mean, my business partner is a physician as well, and and we want to operate as safely as we can because uh, we don't want anybody that comes to our venues to get sick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's the responsible thing to do. We want to respect those people that that uh, uh, do want to be safe. Um, but safety becomes no, within, I believe, Steve. Safety becomes with what, no you, what, what you're doing. No so from the New York Times in Colorado, this is active cases in Colorado. Active, meaning right now. This isn't since, since okay. Jump Street, the get-go. Active cases in Colorado. And, th and this is coming to you as a, a bar owner and a restaurant owner. In Colorado, only 81 active cases are attributed to social gatherings. This is New York Times. I mean, obviously, don't believe everything, but I think that they did a, their due diligence to gather this information uh, from the CDC. Attributed to social gatherings, compared to more than 4,000 from correctional centers and jails, 3,300 from colleges and universities, nearly 2,400 from assistant living facilities. And here's the kicker. Here's the ball breaker right here, Steve. And 450 active cases from restaurants, bars, casinos, and bowling alleys collectively. Collectively. And, 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 and here's what I'm going to say to that. As a bar owner, you know, we need to operate responsibly. And some of us are and some of us are not. I don't want to point any fingers at those that aren't. But the cases we're seeing that are in that last block very often are coming from venues where people aren't wearing masks. They're not social distancing. Um, Great point. And they're making light Steve, of what's going on. Great point. I love that you said that. And, and why, not have your, why not have your concerted targeting towards those folks instead of 
taking the whole community of people. That we should. We and I, I've been saying that for months, okay. and I've told you that, okay. Okay. and I've told other people that. You know, it's it's incredibly frustrating that all of us that own on-premise venues, regardless of whether it's a bar, a restaurant, a brewery, any sort of a tasting room, we are all on-premise venues. We are all hospitality professionals. Mm -hmm. And those of us that are trying to follow the rules and operate safely Mm -hmm. are being penalized because of the bad behavior of a few. And let me be clear. I believe that most people want to be law-abiding citizens, even if they're the, even if the optics or the perception is is this person because they're rocking the boat a little bit that they would like to. Most of those people that even want to rock the boat still want to be safe, still want their dining rooms to be sanitized, still want to follow most of the, still want to wear masks, still want to do these things. But now we're seeing fine everyday Americans that are fighting for their small businesses because the goalposts are changing and the, the narrative, the narrative that our elected officials, and we'll just go right to the governor and the mayor, the narrative is, is that they're not honing in on this information. They're not doing the well, revisions to say, hold on, hold let on, me, let me hold jump, on let just a second, hold on just a second. Uh, they're, they're not changing the narrative to say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reallocate my efforts to save our most vulnerable populations, the elderly, the folks that are really taking the brunt of this damage and taking the, the knee off of the neck of these business owners that are doing the right things. And right now, when there is no relief in sight and they fought so hard to get their vote to keep them in office, the silence is deafening, Steve. It's deafening. Well, I'll tell you, it's, you know, a lot of us, you know, we work very hard to make our voices heard. And in this crisis, a lot of us feel like our voices are not being heard. <coughs> you know, and a you lot have, of the voices are afraid to be heard. That's why they reach uh, out to me on a personal pretty, basis. Some of us have been pretty loud. Yeah. But you have family-owned businesses that are going, going to go out of business because of not only because of this crisis, but because people in power are making decisions that penalize entire communities of businesses for the bad behavior of a few. I mean, it is what it is. There's no other way to say that. Well, it's, it, and they're doing it and, and realize they're doing it with the best of intentions. <laughs> but they're still doing it. And you're still going to see restaurants, bars brew pubs, distilleries, wineries, those that are family owned and those families are going to, some of those families will lose everything while trying to do everything they can to safely operate. I mean, it is what it is. And, you know, we can, we can lobby the powers that be at the various levels as hard as possible, but if they've made up their minds, uh, it's very hard to change their minds. And it's very hard to say, look, go after the bad players. But those of us that are operating safely and trying to color within the lines, if you will, Mm -hmm. don't penalize us. I mean, things are bad. People are making decisions they have to make right now, and no decision is going to be a good decision. But I do feel as though things could be handled differently. It's going to be a tough time to dial this one back. And, man, I don't know. I, I, I look and I see what's around this corner. And as I look into my crystal ball, it doesn't look good. It does not look good. And to turn the dial back on this baby, the only thing that we can do is look out for one another. You know, what's happening in, in North Korea or, or I- anywhere else in the world, the most important thing is taking care of each other right now. And I think we let the well, I, I think we let it slip for a while, saying, we, you know, hey, listen, federal government, we need more federal government because you're going to take care of us, and you see where that's got. Well, and here's the thing, here's the thing. I think the federal government needs uh, the people sitting in Washington, and I used to, used to work on Capitol Hill. I I unfortunately know what the air smells like up there. Um, I think the people sitting in Washington right now need to need to um, pull their heads out of their butts, get down, sit around a table and come up with relief packages that make sense to help small businesses in the United States. I think people at the at the county and the state level here in Colorado 
need to do a better job of listening to business and need to do a better job of focusing on the bad players and not just vilifying entire segments of business and making the decisions on who survives and who doesn't based on their personal opinions. Yeah, there's one option. That you probably left. is something I shouldn't have said out loud, but guess what? I said it. Yeah. Um, there's one option I think you that, left out, Steve, and that option is the power of the purse and the power of actually thinking that people are adults and will do the right thing. And, and that power well, is very powerful when it comes to the point of where you say, listen, I'm going to do everything that I can to keep you safe with my business, and I'm going to market it to you, and I'm going to treat you like a big boy or a big girl, and I'm going to say, you know what, I value your judgment. Wow, it's a crazy notion. I value your judgment that you're going to figure out what's safe for you, and if you feel safe to do business with me, I'm going to allow you to do that. Wow, that would be a cool number three on that list of your one and twos. You know, it is except then you see venues that aren't going to follow the rules with people. We can't live our life that um, way. We can't live our life with let's stop everything because this person may not follow the rules, so let's kill it for everybody. Or let's not get in our car and drive because there's a great chance you might die. Or let's, well, there's, there's all kinds of what ifs. There's all kinds of what ifs. That's Steve. true. That's true. But they're also, right now, we, we as a country need to take some actions to stop the spread of this horrible disease. Wear a mask, folks. We are, it's not going to hey, kill do you. Do you know many people? I don't know anybody that doesn't wear a mask. In fact, I hope. Oh, I got, I got, I got, I got bitched out the other the other day in a parking lot for putting a mask on by some guy. For putting a mask on, well, that's just mm-hmm. a miserable person altogether. Then, it's just well, a- and, you know, we're still seeing in the news on a regular basis that employees of businesses, you know, are being attacked for asking customers to wear a mask. Yeah, we're Even also seeing the in the news yeah. to where. You know, a, a fine restaurant and bar owner and John Elliott, who battled cancer for years and years, caught a case of COVID, subsequently passed away because of it. And Nine News had the audacity to lead with bar owner John Elliott died of COVID, comma, small print, cancer. Unconscionable. The narrative needs to change. The narrative needs to show more people doing the right things. The narrative needs to be like, Steve, you know what? Let's boost our immune systems. Let's get happy and healthy. Let's rah, rah, rah. Let's be Americans. Let's save our small businesses. Let everybody get together and do that instead of this doomsday. Nobody, the people that are doing it wrong are killing it. So we're going to make the rules for the people that well, suck. And, and, and Jay, 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 Jay. That, my that, name's that, Greg. That, that my name's Greg. Point. Steve, my name is Greg. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Jay. That's Greg. It's been a long day. No problem. You're on Jay's iPhone, and I'm like, yeah. Greg, sorry about that. Um, so, um, I mean, I've only known you for how many years? Anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, let me let you totally made me lose track. Um, you know, that's an important point. People are scared right now. People don't know what's going on. You know, find a way to support your local businesses. Find a way to support your community, whoever you are. You know, if you can't go out and dine, order takeout, order delivery, order pickup, wear a mask, say, be safe about doing it, but show some love to these people that are out there that, that make your food, that make your drink, that are in your community, that are your neighbors. Yeah. I'm not just saying, you know, your distilleries. I'm talking your bars, your restaurants, you know, it, bring it home. Yeah. And di- you know, dine, uh, dine indoors and they're outdoors that resembles their indoors, but it's outdoors and make those people spend tens of thousands of dollars to accommodate you in an outdoor environment when it's freezing cold out. Yet their dining rooms are crystally clear, clean. And let's do mandates and 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 executive orders to for the people that are not doing it right. Let's make everybody suffer. Forget the man, Steve. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, Greg. I, I appreciate you know, and I, I love you guys. I love you know, I love having you guys reach out to me. I love coming and making cocktail with guys uh, with we'll you guys in the kitchen. That. There, we'll get back to that. You That's know, where, I mean, we'll, we will get back to that. Yeah, absolutely. And let's hope that that many others will get back to it too. With the fine people in this service industry just getting yanked around, 
like marionettes, man, it sucks. It sucks seeing these people go home to where they have nowhere to turn. Other people, they want to go to a restaurant or a bar because they have no family and renownedly, that's what they did on Thanksgiving and Christmas, have nowhere to go, have nowhere to go. They're going to go, there's some other trouble. You talk, we talked to the sheriff, Well County, cases of domestic violence. You don't need to hear this, Steve. I'll uh, wish you a good day and a happy Thanksgiving and I love you to death. We'll, we'll be back soon. Greg, Jay, both of you, I appreciate. Um, look, uh, we're going to get through this. Um, mm, it's going to be painful, more painful for some than others. But we are going to get through this as a country and as a community and, and as an industry or you know, the hospitality industry. Um, hopefully we learn. And, uh, hopefully we learn. We need hopefully to learn. Hopefully we this. learn. Yep, we need to learn. We're all learning together. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Stephen Gould, there he is. Golden Moon Distillery and Speakeasy. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, bet. buddy. He's a good, Take care. He's a great guy. And everybody, again, everybody's just got their, you know, in the right place. They just, they want everybody to do well and be happy, but at what, at what cost and at what expense? Look at this gal. I've been wanting to talk to her. I saw her on the news. She's a superstar. She's a patriot. She's a great gal. Morgan Harrington, Grimm Brothers Brew House in Loveland, Colorado. Welcome to the Modern Eater Show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, usually we talk about beer and spirits and chicken and grilling stuff. And here we are. We're knee deep into it. You know, tell us about you. Tell us about your business. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm with Grim Brothers Brewer House. We're in Loveland. Um, we've been open for over 10 years. And um, we're, we are known for our German beers. Um, Little Red Cap, Fearless Youth, Snowdrop. I'm sure you guys have had one or two of these. <laughs> I hopefully. love it. I love it. Um, yeah. Okay. And what do you do there? Co-owner, partner? Yeah, Co I'm one of the owners. I'm um, not one of the founders. That would be my husband and um, one of our other partners, Aaron. Um, I'm the chief financial officer. And then um, my lab, which is where I am right now, uh, is where also operates out of the same uh, building. So that's really convenient. Okay, so Loveland, Colorado. And that's uh, under the judicial district of the People's Republic of Boulder, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> we're Larimer County. Oh, Larimer County. Hello. Okay. Yeah. So what's that? Why were you on the news today? What's up? What's happening? Oh dear. So, um, yeah, we're if part of the, um, Melissa County is that they're shutting down again. Um, but we, um, we got together with a bunch of other Loveland businesses and we feel like we are being unfairly targeted with these shutdowns and wanted a seat at the table with our health department to discuss different options that are available to keep businesses open, keep employees employed and, and keep everybody safe from COVID at the same time. So that was our goal was to get a conversation started about different options and not just the band-aid uh shut everybody down aren't you afraid of getting smacked back i mean how long does it take your brewery i mean how long, uh, your licensing is the world it probably before you even opened your doors i'm sure you were dealing with licensing for probably a year yeah um and that's of course the the big what if and the big you know yeah, make an Side example out of you. To, yeah, I mean, that's a possibility. But at the end of the day, I'm not willing to look my staff in the eye and say, I'm sorry, you don't have a job again. Because we had to lay off our entire staff the first time around and could only hire back some of them. We couldn't even hire back our entire staff. So I'm not willing to do that right before Christmas. What are you willing to do? I'm willing to stay open and uh, continue keeping our business as safe as possible, using as many of the safety precautions as we absolutely can. We go above and beyond um, what the yellow level requires and have. Um, we've always done more than what they want you to because we have 
we have a little bit different situation. We've got regulars that have been coming in for almost the entire life of the brewery that are most of them veterans and a lot of them over 80 years old. And we were going to do everything we possibly could to make sure that they still were able to continue coming in every day and having their beer. And, um, and we are going to continue doing everything we can to make sure that that that's still an option for them. Um, we also have an employee that's pregnant, so we are doing more than we should to make sure that she's protected also, but they, our employees don't, don't want to shut down. They don't want to leave. They don't want to not be able to pay their rent and not buy food. I mean, we're in a, a situation where we're not, it's not like the first shutdown. This is different. Mm-hmm. Um, any COVID cases? No, we haven't. Wow. Lucky boy. I've talked to a few that have navigated through that I and mean, seems to be pretty I mean, but it happens and it happens right i mean that's what this yeah. is yeah it's yeah what are you gonna do when they uh come a knocking that's a good question that um we're not really sure how to answer um we don't know uh, until it happens it's kind of we're um we're hoping to get a dialogue going and and get some changes implemented in, in Larimer County to, to help everyone. Um, and, and so we're hoping that that happens first. What's it feel like to be a criminal or an outlaw? (laughs) Um, yeah, the statement made by the governor was, um, not great. Uh, but that's exactly, I, I feel like a, a criminal and a jerk when I have to lay off my staff and that's immediate and in my face, I have to watch them cry and, no. and I can't do anything about it. I, you know, I, I would love it if, if the government would come in and, and lay the staff off for us. Mm. So we didn't have to do that, but that's not the reality. The reality is that we have to be right there looking our staff in the face and then we have to deal with the repercussions. And uh, this time around, it's there are other options and the governor is in support of one of the other options that we are trying very hard to get implemented here. Mm-hmm. And that's the five star variance program that Mesa County has implemented since August. Mm-hmm. Um, so we know that this is not the only option. Mm-hmm. And and we want, we want to be treated fairly. Mm-hmm. You know, the big box companies are allowed to stay open and they don't have the restrictions that restaurants and breweries do. And, Mm -hmm. you know, people can touch everything down the aisles and there's nobody coming behind them, spraying everything down. But Mm -mm. where we are, if somebody gets up from a table, first thing that happens is that entire space gets sanitized. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's an unfair shutdown for us small business owners and and it will be a death sentence for um many many of them. yeah and they're showing you i mean they're showing you by what they do you know don't forget what somebody says yeah. look at what they do and there he is his honor uh, mayor hancock nuts to butts with 200 of his closest friends on a frontier airlines flight heading on into <sighs> mississippi as he tells you to shut your life down and and he, he, he doesn't feel unsafe. If he felt unsafe, he wouldn't be doing that, right? He gets briefed on everything. He sees the numbers. He, he knows. He knows what's going on. I, I don't know. I think it's like a drunk tweet, you know? He, it had to have been. I, I, want, I want to dismiss it as a drunk tweet or just a hoax. Or, and and, and I, every day when I wake up, I think, you know what? This is all just, what a, what a bizarre dream. What a weird-ass dream. Today's different. Today's normal. But no, it's not. It gets more and more and more bizarre. I'm sure you didn't grow up as a little girl saying, you know what? I'm going to risk my business and my reputation and be thought of as a radical and, and, and I'm going to become a criminal. That's what I want to do. I'm sure you never even dreamt that. And you know what? Here's the feedback. You're irresponsible, Morgan. You're a grandma killer. If you would have done this right in the beginning, you wouldn't be in this situation. Play by the rules, you selfish SOB. What do you say to those people? Yeah. 
Well, honestly, um, the person being irresponsible that's killing their grandmother is the one going out in public and potentially exposing themselves and then going back to their grandparents' house. I mean, that's that's ultimately what it is. You cannot hold small businesses accountable for your actions and your choices. Wait, hold on. Uh, that was crazy what you just said there. You must be insane. I can't believe you said that. It's right. It, it, you're actually saying that there are level-headed thinking adults out there that are rational and that actually take precautions, but they believe that if they want to do commerce or business with a business that they should be allowed to feel comfortable and safe by their own own feelings is that what you just said because it blows my mind i can't believe it shush up your mouth girl. Crazy, right it's so weird that people have the freedom to make their own decisions and they have to live with the consequences of those decisions right i have to teach my kids that every day you make a decision you have consequences good or bad mm -hmm. and we don't hold anybody else responsible except for ourselves because that's our job when we're making those decisions is to weigh the consequences I need to look at it. I got to revisit the news piece that I saw you on. I don't know if it's a fair shake anymore. I don't even know the media. You know, I used to be in media for quite some time, and I, I know the game, right? And the narrative is, it has just, they don't want egg on their face because they've been pushing the narrative the whole time, the whole time, you know? And the Kyle Clarks of the world, come on, dude, get to the party. Start doing that research on what to, stop saying you're gonna kill your grandma. Stop, show these types of stories, show the new information, show the new data, show the epidemiologists that are coming out of the woodwork. These guys, politicians are not the brightest people. They're in elected office, right? They're me and Jay. Don't give me an office. I'm not qualified. None of them are qualified. The brightest of brains that are out there, they're coming together and they're saying, listen, all this is doing is, is causing a mistrust in our elected official and government because they're not taking their resources and allocating it to the problem anymore. What yeah, we um, WTF, you know, Morgan. It, it's a tough position to be in, right? It I mean, is. we're not trying to downplay the dangers no. of COVID because it's, it is a very dangerous virus. And it is, there's a reason that these, you know, there are strict policies put in place for how we're running our business. Um, but to, to blanket wide shut down small businesses because you think that's going to mitigate the problem with coronavirus and that's, mm -hmm. That's not the right answer. That's not a, an answer that gives credit to the big picture. That's just a, a Band-Aid. Yeah, I'm sure you wear your mask. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're doing all the stuff to make sure your brewery's clean and go, spending all on the, on the PPE, you know, all the personal protection equipment you possibly can. I'm sure you're doing all the things. You probably shut down at 10 when they said 10 and 8 p.m. when they said 8 p.m. I'm sure you've done all of those things. And now you're just to the point where your hands are up and you look around and you're like, you know what matters in my world? It's Susie over here that I've had yeah. to just let her down before and then bring her back under the hopes of like, I got your back. And now I got to tell her, you know what? I'm doing what exactly what our elected officials are doing, sweeping that rug right from underneath our feet. I'm not going to do it to you, Susie. I can't do it to you. you know, I'm going to go down fighting with you. And I don't even, I, I mean, like I said, I feel like, you know, hey, listen, I'm coming across like I want to kill people. I don't want to do that. Nobody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's the treatment of this coronavirus and the rules and the regulations and the laws and the mandates and the executive order. Is that more deadly than the virus itself? And people are starting to look around and say, you know what, maybe it is, maybe it is. And they're like, man, I, my pants are down, you know? There was one time I was on an airplane, there was a lot of turbulence, I was using the restroom, I didn't lock the door. I flew out into the aisle with my pants off. And I feel like this is exactly what's happening. People are going, what, what did I do? I, I let my drawers drop to the ground and there's absolutely nothing I can do about it. You gotta pick your pants yeah. back up. We gotta learn from this. I don't know where we go from here. I'm worried about you. Anything that I do know about how this works is they're, they're going to, she, she's, she's got her neck out there. Let's cut it off. Well, luckily, we're not the only ones. Um, we're one of uh, 78, well, last time I looked, which um, might be more by now, but um, one of 78 businesses just in the city of Loveland. We are contacted all the time of, from businesses in other cities in Larimer County that want to jump on board. Um, our focus that is Loveland specifically because that's our local community and, 
and we can make a change locally. Um, and it's, it, it's not going to be an easy few days, but I, I am happy that our, our legislative, our, uh, state senators are, our local senators, sorry, are, are already fighting for us. Um, within that first day, they had already sent out a letter to the health department saying, Hey, we need to adopt this five-star program right away. Um, and, and Rob Woodward is, is, uh, you know, a bigger fish fighting in a, a bigger pond, which is good because then we're not. <laughs> Chant it with me. Show me the money. Show me the money. That's what needs to happen. I mean, come on, put it up. You know, I'm sure you would close your, be glad. here's the check, Morgan, close your door. Okay, cool. Everybody go home. They got us. You know, they printed more money from the money factory. Here it is. We got this check. Uh, it's a tough well, thing. In the first shutdown, that was a different scenario, right? Yeah. We had banks on our side. We had, you know, people were letting you wait until you could afford to pay your rent, your utilities. Uh, that's not the case now. So if we if we shut down, they're still calling us to pay the bills, and that's that's how this is this is completely different. Yeah, it's now a destination brewery. It's not just going to be a local one. We want people to come see you from far and wide. Where can they come see you at? So we are off of uh, Denver Avenue, in between Thirty Four and First in Loveland. Um. Yeah, we, we would love to see you as long as you wear a mask and you keep social distance <laughs> oh, yeah. and you follow our rules and regulations because, trust me, uh, we will let you know if you're not. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's not just, uh, all, you know, hands off, do whatever you Of course not. You're doing all the right things. And, I mean, you're, you're just trying to do it. And, you know, hey, listen, um, way to go putting your voice out there. Appreciate you and, and everybody involved. Um, give best to family and friends and co-workers jay oh i just had two things real quick yeah. one where can i get one of those sick hats and two ah, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And, and two uh would you indulge me and greg hates when i do this but um oh he wants a liner no no oh you don't no, want no, a liner no, no. Oh, okay uh, i i wanted i so i've been a bartender for probably longer than you've been oh, alive by wants, the looks of things i can't believe it, it, don't it, don't fall for <laughs> this please no. don't fall for this morgan no no i just want to know um a, a nice little quick story of something just to, that you that you tell around a campfire when you're like oh you want to know what happened in the brewery one day this guy came in wearing a diaper and was throwing spatulas <laughs> you know so, something along those lines do you have something that just pops to the front of your head no. that we can leave on a fun little note Oh, geez. He wants to hear um, that you dragged well, somebody out of there. I mean, if you got one of choking somebody, <laughs> then I'll, I'll, I'll counter it with 10 more of my oh, own. Oh, well, yeah, I know. The, the dragging someone out happened um, a long time ago. I'm a lot older than I look, so I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, when I, I managed the bar, I did have to actually drag somebody out. But, no, I uh, my, my what do you do? husband is, oh, he swung at me across oh, the bar. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Um, yeah. But no, my, my husband is six foot three and he's, he's not a small man, but he has the heart of gold and is just a giant teddy bear. And we had somebody that um, was being incredibly inappropriate in the brewery and I had to kick him out. <laughs> you got to drag him out. What'd you yeah. say? What'd you say? Yeah, how'd you him? get him out of there? Yeah. Yeah. Threatened him with the old, uh, the old I'm going to call it cops, coming. but no one's on the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's the good Yeah, luckily, Loveland police are super supportive of brewers and uh, bartenders and beer tenders. And, yeah, it just takes one call, and they're there to help yeah. you remove a problem child, as it were. Yeah, Jay, Jay's uh, <laughs> signature move was the fake phone call. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, hey, oh, yeah. hey, are you there? Okay, yeah, I'm, a, you know, hey, well, if he here, doesn't leave. Here's the thing, Morgan. <laughs> this is what I would do. I swear to God, I would grab the phone or my cell phone or whatever phone and just and be like, hey, man, I'm calling the cops, you know. And it's like, obviously, I don't want to call the cops. You don't want nobody. No. You don't want the cops out there. And then there's paperwork and pictures and what the hell's going on. So that's my bluff, right? But I would take it uh, one step further where I'd go out there and I'd be on the phone. I'd stand right in front of whoever it is, you know, and I would just describe the person, you know, like starting with A. <laughs> 
cage oh, yeah. and everything and be like, yeah, brown khaki pants. Like, oh, yeah. man, people are just buttoning up their stuff, and they're like, uh, you know, I hate you. And, and, yeah. and they'll have their last, you know, dig yeah. in you before they leave. Yeah. But, man, you start describing them. You start Woo. doing that, though, you got to expect the bar tab's not getting paid. <laughs> well, I, no, there's a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of yeah, times, that's, you that's know, you, you, you give up that $18 just to get them out of the building, you know. Morgan. Um, it's not worth it. Yeah. Ha- happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> And um, thank you. You're yeah, good too. keep doing it. You know, neat, neat place. It's like you th- you think about your local eateries and restaurants and breweries. How important they are to the community for our sanity. If anything else, just yeah. our sanity. That's where your friends and your family unite. You know, and you say only stay with your immediate family. I think there's a case for saying that immediate family is probably right inside your tap room. That's your yeah. Name. It's true. It's true. Oh and, man. And I- it's- I, I liked most of our regulars way more than my family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Morgan, here's what I tell you to jump on the stream or what. Jay's just now getting going. We're going to end the show these days. Yesterday we did it. Jay's got great bartending stories. He actually has this thing, why the bartender hates you, right? And this didn't just happen. Oh, it, yeah. did, it didn't happen overnight. Right? It didn't happen in two years. This happened. How old are you? 54? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 44, actually. And it's so funny. It's like not the biggest stretch in yeah, the world. 30, I'm 44. 30 been, years. Been at business. it uh, since I was yeah. 15. He's so. going to tell a story coming up next. Tune into that thing if you want right. a, a good chuckle. All right. Uh, Take care. Keep doing it. Keep thank kicking. You. Keep thank kicking. You. We'll follow up with you. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there she is. Morgan Harrington. And that's Grim Brothers Brew House in Loveland, Colorado, Jay. Yes, it is. All right, we got eight. Eight folks. You think you can what let's do a bet. What do you think? You think you can get it up to twenty with a story? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I mean you We know, need a good one. I, you know, I've ri- I wrote down a couple, yeah. you know, trying to f- Let's hear what our options are. So there's uh, okay, I'll just give you the I'll give yeah, I'll give you the titles, as it were, and then you can pick one yeah. from the thing. Do we have any um, response that we need to clean up on? Response. Yeah, we have a stream that's going right now. People mm-hmm. sound off on the stream, yeah. and they have res- they respond to no, the stream. Uh, comment? So they, you yeah, mean? Com- is there comments. a comment? Oh, that's what it is called. Yeah. I apologize. Um, George, you're an excellent operator. I don't. Th- I mean, I haven't seen what anything. What Jared Leonard here. say? Jared Leonard said, um, "Where did he go? Hi, dudes. Okay. <laughs> Jay, I love working with Jay." Uh, Jared Leonard, my advice to everyone who's disappointed in our leadership to love yourself more and rely on them less. While it's true our leaders make laws, they don't own your happiness and their decisions cannot make or break our community, cannot break you ultimately. The sooner we think independently and outside of the box and start treating each other with respect and love and courage and encourage each other's happiness, God, I can't read. <laughs> and encourage I don't each other. I don't even see Happiness this on comes my, back. I, I think Gandhi that. said that. I don't uh, even see that on my phone. I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking. Would, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Do you see nine that? folks, Jay. We're going to break. We're going to come back, and it's going to be Jay's story time. What are our options? Oh, your Jay? options are uh, poker machine. Poker machine? Mm hmm. Poker in the front? Um, Liquor in the back? <laughs> Uh, eyebrows. I'm such a juvenile kid. I am such a little kid. And, and eyebrows. Eyebrow. I mean, that's just the title of it, so it may be intriguing. How about body slamming the the blind guy? I mean, that's I, I have urinating and walk in <laughs> is is one, but I can add the, the body, body slamming, slamming the, the blind guy. Under is there any circumstance in the world that you can think of of why you would body slam a blind guy? I can't. I mean, now listen. Well, I won't. I won't say anything about the story. I mean, if that's the one, I'd love it. The first person, if anybody heard that and they want to pick a title, that's the one I'll tell if they comment. And your so here's your choices: poker machine, and that's a good. These are all good, just so you know. Poker machine is one. Eyebrows, urinating in the walk-in, and then uh, body slamming a. a Which blind, one do you like? A blind person. I like them all. Um, they're definitely. You know, each story has the benefit of, like, well, telling this one without a camera on you mm-hmm. and, a, and a microphone and then telling, you know, this one with it. Mm-hmm. So there's a little bit of that. Like one, like, for example, uh, the eyebrow story, I'll just say this. That's a better story not on this platform because it's, it's um, 
there's a lot of things that you have to say that just it just wouldn't. You know what I mean? It just I wouldn't don't fit. Have just wouldn't any fit. Any idea this. what you mean? It it's insensitive. I think you do it. Yeah, there's just a lot of ins and outs to it that I, I can tell. Yeah, I could tell you. I mean, if it's a story and you can tell it's it a to story. anybody, why can't you tell it to our fellow service industry folks? <laughs> well, I can. I can. All I right. just you know. We'll I figure just out have to which think one we're gonna it. pick. Jay, story times coming up next. Why the bartender hates you? That's coming up next. Studio Kitchen Colorado, the modern eater show continues. Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, four by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the modern eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey four pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from eight to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming, uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey Four Pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pecos, or at Colfax and York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian style badassery today. Welcome to Tommy Knocker Brewery here in beautiful Idaho Springs. Uh, we brew normally twice a day. Currently brew about 18 different beers. And right here is our brew kettle, steam fired brew kettle. And uh, we generate our steam with natural gas. We get our natural gas from Encore Energy and Brian Rizzuto. I really like working with Brian because he explains how the system works of getting your natural gas. It's not a mystery. I actually understand our energy bill. Watching the modern eater, and now back to the show. All right, welcome back to Studio Kitchen Colorado as we kind of put a bow on things on this Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, just a couple of things. We're going to get to story time and why the bartender hates you with Jay Parker. Uh, the very talented and handsome Jay Parker was going to tell us some story time, which we need. Um, right now, it's more important than ever. And, and here's the thing. This is, this is our call out to you um it can get lonely and, and awkward and weird here here's the thing and and so humor a little bit of levity parody you know finding just that little teeny bit of i mean i'm silver lining i guess of of finding that it's okay to have a little bit of humor right now when you're everything's crumbling around you uh, the good news is, folks, you know, mental health is one of those, it's, it's wide span. It, it goes across, uh, it transcends through everybody. Uh, it's how you deal with it, it's how you cope with it, and coping mechanisms. I find myself in that same position all the time. If you even <laughs> heard some of the inner battles that I have inside of my head, Jay, on a daily basis, I'm debating myself right now inside of my head. You know, am I putting across the right message with this show? Am I being a good steward of the community? Am I being responsible? You know, if this passes, like I said, you know, the vaccine, I want everything to just end well, you know? Um, but the immediacy of today, the immediacy of the moment, the immediacy of right now, you can get caught up in it and, and it can be a, a a factor that really is the difference between life and death. And there are folks in the service industry, and, and in, in, the, in the industry, but we're talking about the service industry, susceptible to drugs and alcohol, um, susceptible to working long, strange hours, susceptible to loneliness. Um, 
people are taking their lives right now in the industry. There'll probably be more of it, too, as people lose everything. It's a very real thing. And so when I, when I go to, and we're going to go to Jay, and we're going to joke, and we're going to have a little bit of fun, um, that's needed, too, because of balance. And again, that good news is, is that if you were feeling these mental health issues before, now people can identify you, with you more than ever because everybody's all jacked up. Everybody doesn't know reality. Everybody feels insecure right now. So the playing field is evened out, good or bad. The point being is, is that now is a time to when you can reach out to your friend, and there's a good chance that they're going to identify with you and maybe share something with you. So if you're feeling dark and you're feeling desperate and you're feeling like there is no tomorrow, there is. And there is a good tomorrow. Make that clear to yourself. But also make it clear to yourself that you have no business putting yourself out on an island. You have no business sticking with the only the resources that you have. You have to reach out to people. You have to trust that other folks will understand or at least give you an ear to listen. Is it going to change? Is it going to make all the difference? No. But you never know what comes from doing it. it. might cheer you up just for the moment, even if it's for the day. Even if it keeps you alive another day, it's worth it because you might get that the next day and continue on. So as we enter into this very difficult, and listen, I mean, here, quarantining and being alone, that, that's a real reality. Some people don't have families, boyfriends, girlfriends. I go home and I'm alone. You reach out to me. I'm doing nothing tonight, right? I got no one to go home to. You can reach out. You can email me, greg at themoderneater.com. Heck, Jay, at the, he's got nothing to do either. <laughs> do I just, I, well, I was just going to say, I ain't listen, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, I have enough to do not to want to spend t- tonight with you. No offense to that. That's I just right, like I being alone, you know, yeah. but it, it is. It yeah. can be quiet. Um, email, DM us, reach out through the Modern Eater. We want to hear from you. This will, the beat does go on. The beat will go on. This isn't going to go anywhere in the media time. And I hope, I hope that next week, and I said they better, that special legislative session that they promised us on a local level to, quote, give relief to the most vulnerable of businesses within our community, I hope I have egg on my face. I hope there is a plan. I hope they're watching this show right now, and I hope they're snickering because they're going to say, look, we told you so. You should have been patient. We're working on it. We got you. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see it coming. Or it might not be enough. We're learning a lot right now. And again, the next few days, even this weekend, as we put this down, and I, Jay, we might <laughs> want to do a show tomorrow. No, uh, you know, well, I'll do whatever I mean, you we tell me to do. We could and would. Friday, I mean, who knows? Um, but the weekend. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting time. So. We appreciate you being here with us, and we, you know, this is what the show is made for. It's made for our community. We say hyper-local for a, ris- uh, a, a reason, because we are hyper-local. We could not live with ourselves to say, we support small businesses and hyper-local, and then you know what? Just be dark in here. Turn the lights off, go home. I wouldn't be able to live with myself. I wouldn't. So uh, I'm going to thank these guys today. Then we're going to get into story time. How many people? Four people. Four people, Jay. Are you going to be able to increase it from four people? We need to do a bet, an over-under bet on that. I'll thank today for showing up on the show. Sheriff of Weld County, Steve Reams. 18th District Judicial Attorney, George Brockler. Stephen Gould from Golden Moon Distillery. George Eater from Pizza Republica. And then uh, Morgan Harrington from Grimm Brothers Brew House joining us all on the show today. We've had a lot of great guests on, probably too many to catch up with. Uh, what you can do for us, pay back for us for doing this for you, is like us, share us, and then click on notifications so that when we go live that there are going to be more than five people listening to Jay's story. It's story time <laughs> with Jay Parker. And um, Jay, which one did you choose? Well, I mean, I'll, you know. Choose I'll, one. Let's I'll, go. I'm going to do the, uh, with the body slamming. Uh, okay, four one, people. One. I think that you can get the stream up, too. But you've got to be animated with your arms. Well, I, did you see me adjusting yeah, my chair? Because i got to you, you get some, my posture. To, I think you got up to 28 through story time. I think you'll make it up to... 
15? Yeah, what do you think you can do? I can make you, man, seven. Okay, yeah. better be good. Yeah. Uh, so th- uh, Thursday night at the bar, normal bartending. Around 8 o'clock p.m., gentleman comes in the front door. He is um, visually impaired. He's blind. He's got a, a, a blind walking stick. But he comes in. He's not with anybody else, right? And so, so he's visually impaired, not visibly impaired. Did he's I say not walk- No, he, oh. I mean, he said it right. I oh. just want to make the distinction that Jay's not saying that he's visibly impaired. He's coming. Oh, in the bar. oh no, I'm no, sorry. he's blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This dude is blind <laughs> coming into the bar. Yes, he's blind. He's blind, right? Um, and he's got, you know, the, uh, the, the blind walking stick. And so the part that just caught my eye was that he was alone, right? And, and, and traditionally, you know, somebody with a vision impairment, you know, and, and I'd never seen him before. So it's like, okay, but, you know, whatever. You know, I mean, you know, this is the real world. So he comes in, makes his way to the bar, you know. I'm keeping my eye on him just to be like, okay, you know, because obviously there's a little bit of special needs here. Uh, come up to him, address him. Hey, man, what's happening? How you doing? Everything starts normal. Hey, man, how you doing? Right away, real talkative guy, right? Real friendly, real, real social. Um, great, man. What are you drinking? Uh, I, and I can't remember what he ordered. We'll just, you know, he orders a beer. Okay, cool. Well, what is this place, man? Who, you know, who are you guys? So I give him the, the spiel of everything, you know. Well, listen, we're just a sports bar. And who are you? Where are you from? He's like, well, I live in Golden. It was, it was one of these surrounding cities kind of far away. Does um, he know he's in a bar or does he yeah, think he's no, in Target or something? No, no, no. That's, that's why, no, I told him. He's like, yeah, tell me. I'm like, well, it's a sports bar, you know, just in case, you know. And, and I don't know how he got there. You know, I, I've come to find out, find out some more details uh, coming up. So he starts drinking. He sits down at the bar. Now, there's a woman next to him. The woman next to him, her, I don't know what her real name is, but we called her Mama, right? She was a regular. She was Mama. Look at you, and, and, and so uh, uh, Mama, he says to Mama, he noticed this, that there's a person next to him. And so he says... Um, you know, hey, how you doing? And so strikes up a conversation. Mama's a really nice uh, woman. She enter- entertains him because she doesn't know him. And he's just, and he's normal. He's not losing his mind or anything. So as this uh, continues to happen, um, time for a smoke break. Mama wants to take a smoke break. So Mama says, uh, hey, Parker, that's me. Um, you know, watch my stuff. I'm going to go smoke. Okay. Th- uh, this guy, and let's call him Carl because I don't remember his name. But So Carl. Carl says, uh, oh, you know, I love cigarettes too. Can I go smoke, you know, with Mama? And now Mama's gone already, you know, and that's his, you know, new friend that he met at the bar. And, and so, I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm like, yeah, you can smoke your brains out, man. I'll walk out there. So he says, I need you to walk me out there. So I say far out. So I'm, as I'm walking him out to, to the smoking patio, this was the first uh, curveball to where he said something, and I was like, uh, "Oh, yikes!" <laughs> and I don't really know how to how to say it. it. Was he said something really inappropriate about Mama that was really funny, you know? And and I didn't take. I didn't care, you know, because Mama's, you know. I anyway. He's but he said something really off, off, off of uh, a PC normal stuff, and so I just kind of laugh it off, and I go, well, let me get you outside and just dump you onto her because I'm not, I'm not going to babysit you, and and I have no idea. So I get outside and I go, Mama, Carl, you know, and I Carl's like, hey, I turn around right back inside. I don't want any part of that stuff. So I'm back at the bar. I don't see Carl for a little while. Carl's, Carl's gone for a little while. I don't see him for a little while. And so, no, that's not going to work. I'll just do it like this. So I don't see Carl for a while, right? The next thing I hear about Carl is our door guy. And my door guy came up to me, and he says, um, hey, man, listen. He goes, you know the blind guy? I said, yeah. You know, He's like, man, he's in the bathroom, and he's really messing things up. I don't know if he's drunk or if he's on something or what happened, but he, he, he's messing things up, smashing stuff. And, and I'm like, what? The? So I go in the bathroom, and Carl's just, he seems like he's just de- disoriented, right? He's a little banged up, drunk, right? Um, but he's just disoriented in a, a bathroom, and he's blind, so, you know, understandable. But it's like, hey, Carl. Carl, hey, man, you know, it's Parker from the bar. Oh, yeah, man. I say, hey, listen, man, I don't know. He's got the trash can on the side. You know, I'm like, I, let me just get you out of here. I don't know what's happening, but, you know, you're in the bathroom. Let me get you out. He says, okay. I get him out. We go, we're going back. I get him uh, sat down at the bar. Now, he is uh, in the business, what we call banged up. 
he's drunk now, right? And apparently he had gone when he was uh, outside. There's a bar outside also. He had ordered shots and drinks and was the life of the party. I found this out later. And so I was like, he seemed normal. Now he's wrecked. But that's what happened. So anyway, no problem. No more alcohol, though. Carl can't have any more alcohol. So Carl's fine with that. But he doesn't want to stay seated. He wants to get up and walk around. And obviously, you know, that's not a great idea for him because he's blind. And trying to be as, as polite and, I mean, you know, because this is a unique opportunity or not opportunity, unique situation as you can appreciate. So he's walking around and it's like at first, so I tell the door guy, hey, man, like just kind of keep an eye on him, you know, make sure he doesn't do anything, you know, crazy. And uh, door guy says, you know, okay. Well, the dude, he starts going up the stairs. We had a couple of statues up front that are like the novelty from Jack Daniels. They give you the props so that you can display their stuff. He knocks these over. They come tumbling down the stairs. The head of one of them pops off. So now it's like, all right, you know, with this, with Carl. It's like, we can't just let Carl roam around. You know, we, we, I mean, we can't, you know. You want to. Because, you know, especially nowadays, you can't say anything to anybody. You, you know, you got to be careful. But now he's knocking over stuff. I mean, now it's a problem for all of us. So I say to Carl, hey, Carl, listen, man, you can't be walking around and, 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 and knocking stuff over. You just can't do it. He's like, well, I, but I don't want to sit down. And it's like, well, listen, man. And so I get him to a moment of just a little bit of calmness, and we get him sat down in a booth, which is away from the bar, kind of away from things that where he can hurt himself or d- d- knock somebody down, whatever. And keep in mind, too, Greg, he's a big guy, right? He's a, he's a big dude. He's probably like 6'3", 250, you know, right around there. And, um, and, and so he, he, I have him s- sat in the booth, and then now I'm trying to figure out we got to get this guy home or out of here or, or something, but he's not with anybody. So it's Carl. Is there somebody you can call? How would you get here? He's like, I took a, a cab or an Uber or whatever it was. You know, it was somebody drove him. It's like, okay, well, listen, man, um, you may want to call that back, the cab or the Uber, because, you know, you're a little drunk and you're knocking over some stuff and it's all time that stuff. To go. He says, uh, you know, no, I, I want to get up. And so he starts to get up. Well, the door guy's like, well, what do I do? You, you, what do I, I, I put my hands on him? I don't want to do this. So you po- politely c- compress him back down into his seat and say, listen, Carl, let's call you a cab. You can't go walking around anywhere. If you have to go to the bathroom, we'll take you to the bathroom. We're just trying to you know, do all the right things. Well, Carl wants no part of sitting down anymore. And so he just decides, oh, no, I'm getting up, and I have no idea where he's going. But the door guy now is like, he says, you know, got to do that. Well, here comes Carl now. Now Carl is coming with some, <laughs> with some, uh, like, half, like, I would, he's not, you know, but there's some, there, he's coming with some, with some punches, actual he's punches. Heat. And, you know, yeah, to, to the door guy. And the door guy is one of those door guys where you, you don't do that. Yeah. He, he's been around the block a few times, and he really knows how to handle himself. And so he, he didn't just, you know, freak out. It re- actually a really good door guy. And so Carl is throwing these awkward kind of punches at the door guy who's kind of has them from behind being like, hey, man, let's, you got to – what's going on? Like this. It got to the point where now Carl is getting increasingly – violent with this and so and the door guy he finally just basically had enough of this and and as as carl started to be more aggressive with hitting his face and getting grabbing him and stuff like that he picked him up and body slammed him on the front steps of the bar and it let out a horrendous noise the death cry yeah it was a little bit of (laughs) A little bit of that mixed with he he did um, poop himself. He pooped himself. He pooped him when this happened, and we didn't find out till about forty seconds after he pooped himself. Oh, okay. You know, um, he and as the door guy was kind of holding him down, going, "Listen, man, like you, you can't hit me, you can't walk around." And that, so now we have to call the cops. Mm-hmm. Now the cops are called. Um, he's screaming at the top of his lungs. Racial obscenities, just screaming them at the top of his lungs. Oh, he's yelling out yelling racial slurs. Yelling out racial so slurs. The loudest I've ever heard. And now peop- now everybody's like, oh, here's the show. Let's go. You know. And unfortunately, in the bar business, it's, it's not the craziest thing that I've seen. And, and, and so uh, the police show up. 
he uh, he. I'm imme- still thinking about the poop. Where's the poop? Everywhere? The, no, it's it, no, the, it's just it's in his in pa- his pants. It's in his pants, oh, and you know it's it's evident yeah. that it happened. Yeah. You know. Um, he I'm, didn't bargain for this. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> I don't said, know, man. Let me get man. a cab to Gibby's. Uh, yeah, I don't know who this <laughs> is, though. I don't know who he is and, I mean, and why he's you, there. You literally we couldn't figure it out. So as we're trying to – so now the police are there. There's three of them, right? Two guys, one female officer. And the female officer is talking to him, and she's saying, well, where do you live – how do we get you home, yeah. right? They don't want to take him to jail or any kind no. of – we just want to get him home, right? Yeah. So he says – Oh, God. He says, well, I live with my girlfriend, but she doesn't know that I'm gay. And so – Oh, I, wow. So I did not expect th- that. This turn. was a huge curveball. <laughs> and so I hear this, and I'm like, well, whatever. You know, I don't care. I don't think she's going to care too much. Yeah. She gives him her cell phone, the police officer, her personal cell phone – to call his girlfriend and to come out as being gay to her because it's not fair to their relationship. Something bizarre like that. And I'm hearing this as I'm talking to another officer going like, well, here's what happened. He came in. He kind of went berserk and, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, that's it. That's a and good then, uh, and Did then, he do it? And, and Did he do what? Call the, to his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. He was on the phone talking to somebody. I don't know how true that part was, but, I, but as God is my witness – that's exactly how it went down. I heard the conversation, and I'm like, what? Uh, I didn't think that he d- was gay after the comments he made about Mama, but uh, apparently, uh, you know, who knows? Um, and Carl, he was a lovely man other than the fact of his freak out and, and everything. And, and, so, and the door guy felt terrible about body slamming a blind guy. He really did. But, but trust me, I'd be the first to uh, call out somebody for doing yeah. something wrong. We did everything we could to try to just keep it normal, and, and it just couldn't happen. And, uh, and so the police uh, took him away in the car. I don't What's know. What's the moral of where the story, Jay? Man, the moral. I'll tell you the moral. The moral, the moral, moral of the story is, is, is if you're going to act funny in a bar and you're going you're to go get sideways with some people, uh, be prepared to get body slammed and poop your pants. I don't care who you are. Don't you miss the, the good old days? You remember when bars were open and people would talk and play pool together and you know, get cut off. And I've got a few pool table stories, yeah. mind you. You guys, all right. Thank you for the story, Jay. You were right. Seven people popped up. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, uh, right. yeah. that's all right. Not it's my best are, word. It, it's the replay that matters. How many times we, do you hear a story like that about body slamming <laughs> a, a blind person? Man, I mean, yeah, that's it's the bar business. As, right? as far as bar stories go, that's pretty good. I can tell you one. It's a body slamming. Believe it or not, back in the day, Jay, um, I was a bouncer at a bar called named Modine's downtown. Modine's. Modine's, man. I think it turned into a coffee shot like St. Pete's or something like that. What were your, Modine's, Larimer what, Street. What was your bouncing uh, duties? I had long hair, man. I, I remember your Long hair, that. and I had these uh, Oakleys on those. You remember the wires, the round wires, mm-hmm. and they had clear lenses? In fact, I, yeah, they'd get, <laughs> they were monochromatic, so, you know, they'd get a little dark. I thought oh, I was the coolest thing since I bet. I'd sit yeah, up on I the bet. steps, you know, watch people dance the 80s music. and co- the, So the off-duty cops would be the ones at the door, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm at the door with this off-duty cop. Anyway, this big commotion. Here comes uh, uh, my counterpart who's inside actually working, right? I'm talking to a girl. Who knows what I'm yeah. doing? I'm out front. Oh, I'm at IDing. That's what I'm doing. That was my night. I'm IDing. Dragging this guy out. The off-duty cop's got him. He's got him in a headlock, you know? He got, and, and, and the guy, he's kind of getting the better of the off-duty cop, right? Mm-hmm. Off-duty cop solicits me. He goes, help me out. Help me out. And I did all I, I just bear hug, right? I, yeah. From behind. Yeah. And I went in, and I was like, I'll sacrifice my body for this. So I go to lay on the ground, boom, right over my shoulder, and kaboom, this guy's on the ground. That was it for him. And I was like, man, I actually did something, right? And I felt so empowered because it's like, it's the cops that I would have to answer to. Cop asked me to do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I man. got lucky that night, Jay. That's right. Oh, my God, huh? man. I got punched in the face one time. Body slamming people. Yeah. That's the stuff. Okay, you guys, thanks for joining us here today. Um, just a little bit <laughs> left at the end of the year. I'm seeing this guy with the delay, you know, me going, Let, this guy never did anything oh, yeah. that, that I like, said. Suplex. Oh, suplex. God. Them. All right. Okay. Um, 
back here probably Monday, but it'll be, God, what happens over this weekend? Who knows? The silence is deafening. Um, they're showing you who they are right now, and um, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting world. It's all bizarre, Jay. It Would is. you body slam me? You think yeah. you could? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would love to, actually. <laughs> For Jay Parker, Little Rich Snyder, Brian Freeman, Face Johnston, the uh, whole cast and crew here at the Modern Eater, we wish you a happy Thanksgiving and count your blessings because there are some. See you back here on Monday, 2 p.m. The Modern Eater Show continues.